me kill him. Beats in the What it good be? Hopefully, what it should be. This is your boy N A O N A A. What up? It's DJ E F N. And this drink test, motherfucking Yappy Hour. Make some noise! And I'm gonna tell you like this: when me and this man to the right of me started this show, we said there's other outlets for the new artists. There's other ways. There's radio. There's other ways for the new artists. We wanted to show love and respect to people that came before us, some people that came on the side of us, and some people that came behind us. But today's episode is super, super, super special. We've had legends, but we ain't, we've, this is, this is a, a new word that I made up yesterday. It's a more legend. <laughs> He's like an immortal legend. That from the first hip hop record that was commercially released, bit off a hemp. Woo! They stole his bars. This man has been around relentless. He's been there when hip hop has w w was there, and, and he had control over it. He had a pulse in the game. It wasn't just like he was around, just 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 being there. No, he had his own. This man is a legend. He's still here. He deserves his flowers. He deserves some cognac. Mm. And we're going to have fun and we're going to get into his business. This is what I like to call a super legend. In case you don't understand or don't know what the fuck is going on right now, we have Grandmaster Motherfucking Cass. Yeah. Now, now, me doing my research, right? Uh, to tell you the truth, I've, we've been doing this, what, almost six years? We're in our sixth year, yep. We're going on our sixth years. I'm, 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 I'm not trying to gas you up. This was the funnest research I've ever done. <laughs> because everything that I researched from you, it led me to something else. And it led me to this. And this is the reason why I, I like, I would, if I ever got a chance to like speak to young artists, I would tell them, it's good to look, look, go pave the way. It's good to go look at that, you know? So with you, yo, your history is so rich. It's so like, but one of the one of the illest things that I did not know was Sugar Hill's rapper. The uh, what is it? Rapper's delight. Right? Uh -huh. He outright stole your lyrics. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> he said his name in the lyrics. Pretty much. So, so can you describe for the, 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 the right, for the people who's not listening the first hip hop. Not, not especially the first hip hop record, but the first hip hop record was released commercially. The first, the oh, that first went hit, commercial. The first yeah, that went commercial. Hit, the okay. First, yeah, the first commercial hit for hip hop. Okay, so so what, what happens? Because when this record comes out, which I did not know, the community hated this record. Yeah, pretty much. The, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like the, the the early hip hop community, you know what I mean? Mm. That like, who is this? What right, is this? Right. Like, who are these niggas? Because rappers back then would come to the Bronx or come downtown. Pretty so much. So y'all pretty much all knew each other. So pretty, Exactly, okay. exactly. And for somebody to come out of nowhere with, with three people like nobody knows, like, who the fuck is they? <laughs> right, 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 you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. I mean, we wasn't out in New Jersey. Right. We didn't know cats was out there doing right. things out there in right. Jersey. Apparently they were, but right. our attitude here was like, who the fuck is they? You <laughs> feel like there's a boy band coming out of here. Kind of, kind of, yeah. Put together, like, right. yo, can you rap? Come here. Come mm. over here. Hey, right. you? You too? Come here. Come with me, that type of thing. But um, I mean, how he got the lyrics in the first place? Hank was uh, he was down with me. He, wow. he was managing my group, wow. which was called the Mighty Force right. back then. Wow. And um, he uh, he had to get a job in New Jersey to pay back the loan he took out Whoa. to 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 
like refurbish our sound system. Wow. When he started managing us, he took out a loan from his parents for like two stacks, wow. right? which was which was bread back then. And um, we got bigger speakers, better amplifiers, all that, so we could go out and bust niggas' ass when we go uh -huh. out to play. Um, and in order to pay back the loan, he got the job in a pizza shop in Jersey where Sylvia Robinson happened to be looking mm, for wow. people. You know, and somebody seen him in the pizza shop with a boom box. That's Sugar Hill Records for people that don't know. Right, Sugar Hill right, Records, right. Sylvia Robson, head of Sugar Hill yeah. Records. Um, he used to take a boom box to work with him every day mm. and be playing my tapes wow. in the boom box. Wow. My practice tapes or tapes I record for my parties. Uh. So he's in there flipping dough and shit, you know what I mean, making pizzas uh. and just rhyming along with the tape. People coming in and out of the joint like figure, hey, this guy's a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this guy's a fucking rapper. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> when Sylvia started looking for people, you know, somebody led her that way. And he came out, you know, they was like, yo, could you come out? We want you to. Mm. And instead of this nigga like, well, nah, I don't rap. Mm. But I manage mm -hmm. Casanova Fly. He, he just took your shit. That was it. That was what he was supposed to do. Okay. I don't rap now. Nah, I don't mm -hmm. rap, but I managed Casanova Fly. He right. was the manager. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. He just got in the car, repeated all the stuff that was on the tape. Mm. Wow. They loved it. And they was like, you in. Wow. And so they put him down with sugar. But the other two was rappers? G and Mike yeah. was part of like a hit DJ group. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sound on sound. Oh. Um, wow, sound on sound. I used to go to the studio called Sound on Sound. Sound on sound oh, out, wow. in, uh, out in Jersey. You wow. know what I mean? So, yeah, they were, I'm not going to say Bronx caliber right. MCs, but right. they was rappers. You know what I'm saying? And, and they, I spoke to them on, on their groups. podcast, and they acknowledged what had happened. He said, y'all are cool now. Oh, yeah, we cool yeah. now. I mean, we... We cool. <laughs> no, no, as far as that goes. No, no, I mean, we as cool as we could be. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. They, can't, they can't, you know, give me no back money. Right. Yeah, I mean, it ain't on them. So, right. I mean, we cool. They didn't even know. Why? What, 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 that they was making money? No, they didn't know that That's, Hank was, had right. bitten his rhyme. Oh, the other two should have hugged. Nah, oh. they didn't know. They was amazed at this nigga. Oh, they thought he was ill. They was like, this motherfucker's <laughs> the truth. Like, oh, He's shit. saying shit that none of us, you know what I mean? Because oh, if you look at, we listen to Rapper's Delight, niggas is like hip to the hippity <laughs> right, hop and right. hop. And Hank is like, uh, da, 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 da. that's me, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, he said his name in the in the rhymes. That's the craziest shit. Like when you hear that, what are you thinking? I'm thinking. When do you hear fuck, that? What's yeah. the first? Wasn't time it the hear? last verse? He was the last verse on the no, song. No, he was right? the he was the second. Okay, he was the second. Come on, Hank, sing that song. Check it out. I'm the C A S N the O V A N the rest. That's your ball. That's it's my name. name. <laughs> he says his name in the verse, and he <laughs> kept the name in there. Yo, back in the day, when you when like like I think Love Bug was one of the first pe people I heard spell out their name, mm -hmm. and when First, cats first start rapping. Love Starsky, yeah, Love okay. Starsky, rest nah. in peace. Okay, and when cats first start rapping, they were just using whatever cadence uh, was out, whatever right. you know what I mean. So actually, people were saying, "I'm the L O V E B," not realizing, nigga, you saying that you somebody else, <laughs> me included. <laughs> and I was mortified when I found out I was saying that I'm somebody else's name. Right. So from then on. I mean, I fact check my shit before I say anything. I'm the, mm -hmm. nigga, I'm me. I'm mm -hmm. not him, I'm not this, I'm not that. So that's when I came up with I'm the C A S N O V A and the rest of F L Y. I mm -hmm. spell out my name, nigga. So for there cannot be another rhyme like that. Right. There is no other Casanova fly. So let me ask you something. Were you more mad that the record that the record was perceived to be whack, or were you mad that this guy is actually biting my lyrics? Or was it evenly? Mad I, I wasn't mad that the record was perceived to be whack because it wasn't perceived to be whack. The shit was a hit. Right. It was a hit. Mm -hmm. Now, when he gave it to me, mm -hmm. I had two, like, the first copies when he first got them and brought them to my house. It was like, yo, check it out. And I put shit on the turntable. I let it play. I'm like, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Oh, shit, all right, all right, all right. After a while, I, like, fall asleep. That shit was, like, 20 minutes yeah, long. That's a long record. That's a long record. <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean, and the flyest shit on it, and and and, and hey, is is the shit I was saying. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I wait to hear my rhymes, and it and it'll be like, all right. But um, nobody thought it was uh, uh, the hip hop community thought it was whack. Right. Us us niggas who 
think everybody is whack but us, you know what I mean, right. type shit. We didn't have, we wasn't open-minded like we are today. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody was whack to mm -hmm. us. So you know these niggas was way off the chart. Right, right. So when the song came out, <laughs> the song was trash to us, but we knew at large this shit was a fucking hit. And this is what set the stage for rap and hip-hop music in mainstream America. Right. You know what I mean? Wow. Was I, was I th bitter about it? Right. You fucking right. I'm <laughs> supposed to be in the Sugar Hill Gang. Right, right, right. Not that I wanted to be in the Sugar Hill Gang. I know what you're saying. Okay, but, but had, had, had that went the way it was supposed to be, right. I mean, my life would have been different. You right. don't know what the fuck would have been. I'll right. tell you what, the Sugar Hill Gang would have been a whole lot fucking doper. Right. All right? Because... Because back then, I, I thought it was um, interesting to see that you guys really wasn't recording music. You guys were just making music live. Facts. So, so like, how did that transition from, from that? It was, it was after Rapper's Delight? Did... Well, well, we was recording. We were recording our parties. So right. that was the first recordings of hip-hop. Right. Like those tapes, tapes going around. those right. cassette tapes. Right. Right. That's the way hip-hop started to spread. Right. First locally, you know, domestically, and then overseas because cats was going in the army. Right. Cats right. was going in the service and stuff and right. taking their music with mm -hmm. them, taking them cassette tapes. So they'll be in Germany, they'll be in Kong, wherever they stationed at, mm -hmm. and that's what exposed that music to other people. Like, mm -hmm. what's that shit you listening to? Mm -hmm. Yo, this is hip-hop from back home, this and this and that. Wow. So that was one of the first vehicles that helped it to spread. And then when the rap music came out, the, the records came out, mm -hmm. that changed the whole motherfucking, you know, the paradigm of, of what it was. It was like, now you got to do this. Right. To be successful, I think we were the last group that that performed. Cold Crush. Yeah, the Cold Crush Brothers was the last hip hop group from the first group that that could survive without a record, without a hit record. Because right. once that record thing came into play, changed you everything. had to have it. It changed right. everything. Right. You know what I mean, so we we had we had a little longer run than most mm -hmm. without a hit record. Wow. Now Crazy. back in the days, y'all was dressing weird. Yeah. <laughs> Blame that shit on the Furious Five. Okay? The Furious Five. <laughs> they always want to say, yeah, everybody copied our style. And everybody, yeah, we did. We copied that shit. <laughs> yeah, we did. No, because I'm looking. I'm looking. So, I'm, like I said, I'm doing my research. And that was a part of the time in hip hop where everyone always says that, like, yo, the original hip hop is dressed like rock stars. And now, like since Lil Wayne kind of like took on that rock star persona, I kind of see it coming back. But uh, it's a it's a different persona, though. Okay, it's okay. A, you know what I mean. Well, it, it's a different era, right? You know, so right. what a rock star looked like back then is different from what a yeah, rock star right. looks like today. And, and uh, it was really punk rock, right? Well, 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 well kind of mixed. Okay. The thing was how it started for the Furious Five. I don't want to mm. speak for nobody, but with mm. me and my relationship with Melly Mel, we right. talk all the time, right? And, and pretty much the whole group. Yeah, I know the history. Mm -hmm. And um, so they once they started making records with Sugar Hill, they went on the road with groups like Cameo and the right. Barcades right. and you know what I mean? And they were looking more disco. So style. they started they started emulating the look of stars. Right. Of, you know what I mean? Right. Rick James and right. you know what I mean? We we, right. we want to separate ourselves from the way the audience looks. Right. right. And I believe in that wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You go to the show, I don't want to see a nigga look like me. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> So they they kind of initiated that as far as hip hop is concerned. When they right. came off the road, they had niggas making leather outfits with furs and, and right. tassels hanging off them and all kind of shit. And it was like us, we had an excuse for it. Mm -hmm. We had the record punk rock rap. Mm. So we were trying to merge the two energies, the before, hip hop before energy. Before Run DMC did walk this way, y'all yeah, was doing it yeah, first. This was before Let's make that. some noise back. <laughs> Go ahead, keep, keep going. This is mad interesting to me. I need, we need, I need to drink something. Oh, yeah, we got, got you Hennessy. Yeah. We got you Duce, Black Owner. We got you Hennessy. Let's get it. Let's yeah, get yeah. it. Please, please, please. Let's take a shot already, man. I'm, I'm in. I got my <laughs> Japanese Hariki, baby. I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. Let's go, baby. Yo, yo listen, and we're going to set it off. We're going to set it off right. All right. Grandmaster Cass, we don't know if you know, our show is about giving legends their flowers when they're alive. We started that. We ain't make up the slogan, but we started to spread that slogan. And let me just tell you something. In case you don't know, you are appreciated. You are a legend. I went and searched your history. I damn near, tears came out of my eyes when I was walking because I was like, damn, I thought I knew everything about you. And then I, it just kept going, and I didn't know the rappers that like shit. I definitely, that's, that's, I didn't know that shit. People, I did not. That's the only thing they know yeah, about Yeah, no, me. I knew everything. But, so we're going, 
We gonna motherfucking salute you while you motherfucking here. Let's, Let's do the flowers that. thing now. Man. Let's do the, Let's listen, listen. Where you at, Kev? But, yeah, yeah. This is the first time we actually was the second time. Scarf is the first time. Yep. But look, this is throw? actual flowers. These are real flowers, and these, this is for you. That's right. That's oh, for you, goddamn. It makes the noise. Oh, shit. Real. Oh, that's love. That's love. Yeah. That's love. That's love. Up the noise. Yeah. Right. We're getting real flowers, goddamn. Jesus, man. This, this is hard to open up. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, Russell Peters. Get your ass in here. No, come on, man. Come on. Are you smoking too, goddamn? Let's go. Talk about. Oh, fuck. Last time I smoked with you, I got all fucked up. Let's go, baby. Yeah, I, so, yeah, I already told him about that. So, um. Woo, what were we talking about? Okay, we were talking about the... the, the no, I, 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 I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Because I really want to know your opinion on this. Okay. Did you watch Versus the other night? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. How y'all niggas doing? I'm so <laughs> glad that you brought that up. <laughs> okay. I, that was the first Versus I ever watched. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. First one I ever watched. I don't know what you're about to say. What listen, did you think of it? Listen. This nigga, Jada Kiss... Put hands and feet yeah. on them niggas. Man. Yes, he sure did. He showed you what a real MC yeah. is supposed to do. He did what a real MC, any nigga who considered himself a real MC, that's what he was supposed to do. And that's what he did. And the DJ for the you know what I mean? The DJ, the, the DJ, yes, he, you know, he if he wasn't on point, that would have fucked shit up. Right. right. But I mean, uh, Jada just Jada, commanded yeah, yeah, yeah. that shit. And right. with all that angst going back and forth, all that, oh get the fuck. You could anybody could have lost their poise out there. Yeah. Right? Jada kept his poise yeah. throughout that shit. Right. Okay, and, and they paled in comparison right. as far as entertainers mm -hmm. and MCs. Mm. Let's take a shot. You ready? Yes. All right. Oh, yeah, you got that's, that's my opinion. Okay, All no, right. we're going to keep going. We ain't, we ain't <laughs> in this. We ain't in it with that because I want to, because you know I got to ask, how did you feel when you heard them rhyming up the vocals? Salute. So, take a shot first. I do a pop up. Okay. With these cats. Um, it's Woo. called Buds and Bars. Mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we. Got vendors, we sell weed, mm -hmm. and we have like a, a rap contest. Mm -hmm. The first thing I tell all these young what niggas. What the fuck was that? Hold on. What? What was that noise? No, no, oh, that no, was okay. him. Oh, that's them. I was like, <laughs> like a rabbit. You just want a rabbit on your head. Yeah. The first thing I tell these niggas. Don't rhyme on the boat. Don't rhyme over your motherfucking music. Right. Every last one of them right. that come up do the same thing over, put their vocal track on and rap over it. Yeah. That's the most unprofessional shit that you can do. Even when you ain't a professional. Right. So when you are a professional, you know better than right. that shit. Especially if you got hit songs, motherfucker. Ain't right. like nobody know your music right. and you gotta throw the vocals on to kinda, you know what I mean? You, you got hits already. Right. You gotta be able to rock your shit. And that was the main point that, that killed him. Cause like, me, me um, I've been in the game 24 years now, right? But I do have records where I've never collected the instrumental. I only got two. I got sometimes, I don't have the instrumental to that, and I don't have the instrumental to I'm leaving. But So when I perform them, I, I let the beat play, but when it comes from my vocals, I put the vocals all the way down so everyone knows that I'm rhyming above this shit and they know that I'm, I ain't lip syncing. You as, either as put the vocals down or you bring your vocals up. Right. You know Ooh. what I mean? If you rhyming over your right. track, you rhyme right. over your over. track. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Because everybody got a, uh, joints where they ain't got no you know, mm. instrumental to it. Right, yeah. I, it happens to me all the time, but that's how I learned mm. how to... Emote and you know go over my shit. And I'm, the flow got to match. Exactly. If it don't match exactly. Up, it it sounds sound like right. two niggas. Right. And you know what I mean. So yeah, that was important. That was right. important, and that was a dope point that he made. Mm -hmm. And that was a big, you know, a big reason for the L. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you would have just played each other's records and no, nobody got on to perform, right. I, it would have been a little closer. Because right. I, I, but the performance part of it is what took him over the top. Because it, it was funny. Because it reminded me of you guys. Uh, or, or, what was it, The Furious Five? Fantastic Five. Oh, Fantastic Five, against yeah. you guys. And it reminded me of what you said. You said, you thought you lost that night, but you went back and listened to the tape, and you said, according to the tapes, it was, it was different. It wasn't me that thought we lost. Right, it, was, it was, you know, we, we lost to the crowd, you know, in the crowd, they, they said who won, they, they cheered for them, they cheered for us, but they cheered louder for the, for, for the Fantastic Five. Mm -hmm. You know, mostly, bitch, I mean, you know, Females. <laughs> and um, 
but, at the, but because it was the visual, it was the excitement of the moment, they was the last ones on and all that. But when you went home and took that tape home and you just listened, without all them visuals, without all that, just right. listen, you was like, wait, fuck out of here. Them niggas bust their ass. Them niggas that damn don't sound better than them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Right. So that was on us to get, right. get our visuals up. Right. So And they had eyeliner on too. <laughs> they, and, and, and three and four of them is light skin. Right? Right? So we didn't have a chance. Yo. We didn't have a shot. We, we talking 1981, my dude. All right? Oh shit, we that's some legendary shit right there. Let's go. You can get light. You can get whatever the hell you want, buddy. Hey, that's a super dog lighter too. God damn it, God damn it. Right, Shameless okay. plug, God damn it. So, so back then, this record comes out. Rappers is the light, right? Are everybody saying, is that now what, we, what people are saying? Because at first it was important to have your tape circulating throughout the city and things like that. So is, does that shift that everyone wants to be on records now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was it was a shift that made people, okay, oh, we can make records? We can right. put this shit on records? Y'all didn't think that was right. something that was possible. Exactly. Right. Right. Nobody right. was thinking that way. The closer th we got to it, uh, me and my, my first DJ partner, Disco Wiz, okay. all right? <clears throat> on the first Hispanics in, in hip hop. And most of the first Hispanics in hip hop was down with me. Wow. By okay. the way. Shout out Charlie Chase. That's what I was trying to, Disco Wiz. Yeah. Whip a Whip, Charlie Chase, Joe Conzo. I think make some noise. I right. right. okay. I fucks with my Boricuas. All right. I'm in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I mean, I fucks with my Boricuas. Let's go there. So, um, just, just that association, you know, just, I mean, just differentiated, you know, right. me from. Cause, cause I imagine. I'm sorry to cut you off. Cause I imagine at first, especially with rappers that like, and and especially even my day, like at first it used to be whack to be on the radio. At first it's yeah. like yo, like like you was. You didn't want to be commercial. You yeah. wanted we, to stay underground. That was us right. with our dumb asses. Right. <laughs> we didn't want to make a record. We didn't want to. We didn't want to go to a label. Really? When Rappers Delight came out, mm -hmm. uh, it was labeled. The labels that was out was uh, Enjoy. Enjoy. Wow. Bobby Robinson. Wow. May he rest in peace. God bless. Um, whose son is Ronnie D from the Disco Four. Mm. Wow. May he rest in peace. Wow. God bless. Okay. Well, Bobby had the whole roster of early hip hop artists. Mm. He had the Furious Five. The Treacherous Three, The wow. Field is Four, wow. Punkin' wow. and the All Stars. Mm. I mean, and, and all he, and the band that he had psh, mm. had all the music sounded tight. Wow. We didn't want to we didn't want to go run to um, enjoy because they had signed all these other people before right. them. So right. it's like we ain't gonna go get on the back of nobody line. We got these niggas out in the street. And Russell's mm -hmm. not involved at all. No, Russell's not he, involved. He, he at, cared at this time. Nah, he, yeah. Russell's like like on the fucking with Curtis Blow. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and when when Run was Curtis Blow's DJ. That's right. Um. Damn, I lost my thought. Um, um, what were we talking about? You were saying you didn't want to sign to the label. Didn't want to sign. Yeah, we yeah. didn't want to sign to yeah. a label. We was like, yeah, that's corny. Fuck, fuck records. Right. I mean, we we playing in Harlem World. We playing right. in Bridgeport. We playing in this and this and that. But little by little, the you know what the the requiem or whatever you want to call it changed for you being hot or right. not. You could be hot in the street, but if you don't right. got no record, right, right. We was headlining when New Edition came out. Wow. Well, Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike? Yeah, yeah. Mm. They opened up for us. Run DMC opened up for us. Back to Make some noise. Yeah. So for us, <laughs> for, for us, that was more important mm. because we didn't see that the future was just gonna be records. And right. then, after you got hit records, then you do the performance. There's not a lot of people who don't make records out here doing shows and shit right. that's viable. Yeah, wow. the shows you know, coming right second now. to that. So, but in hindsight, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? We could have gotten the back of anybody's bandwagon or whatever and made our way to the fucking front of it, mm -hmm. you know? But because we went another route, our uh, commercial success mm -hmm. didn't uh, compare with our... It didn't transmit. Ground level success, right. 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 And our show, which was the best show in hip hop at the time, mm -hmm. didn't translate to vinyl. Wow. We weren't able to translate that energy that we brought to the stage and that, you know, to mm -hmm. vinyl. So, 
What was the second hit? Because I think it was Rapper's Delight, then it was another record, and then it was The Message, right? It was three. It was two records before Rapper's Delight. The intros, pretty much, Whoa. was uh, uh, um, King Tim the Third. Okay. Okay. And then Jocko, oh, Rhythm shit. Talk. Wow. Mm. By Jocko, the 50s radio DJ. Wow. Mm. Had a joint with the Fatback Band. And then after Rappers of Light, what was that? What was it? After Rappers of Light, um, oh, a Sequence came out with okay. Funk You Up. Okay. Um, they started, uh, they started to sign everybody. The Crash Crew, right. the, the Treacherous Three, uh, Busy B was over there at one mm -hmm. time, you know, mm -hmm. so everything for a while was Sugar Hill, Sugar Hill, Sugar Hill. They wow. had it unlocked. It before wow. Def Jam, mm -hmm. Sugar Hill was What, what, the year, what years are this? Just so we're we... talking from 79 to like 82, 83. So late 70, Even 84, right. yeah, into the right. early 80s, right. you know right. what I mean? Until like 84, right, when, when Def Jam started and uh, Run DMC and them just. That was like from Run DMC on. It was just different from right. there on. Right. They was the they was the dividing line between right. our era and the next era. Mm. Now recently we just saw that De La Soul, God bless them brothers. They finally got their masters back. Yep. Make some noise, yeah. All right, no doubt. Right. How, how do you feel about that? Is, is that a struggle that you go through? Yeah, yeah, my group went through, but we don't got as many masters as they lost right. soul, right. you know what I'm right. saying? Right. But they, they, yeah, we had to struggle with the record company and shit like that because they were, you know, li doing licensing deals with our music and stuff like that with us not knowing shit about it and wow. all kind of wild shit. And like I said, we don't got the biggest and the longest catalog, but I don't give a fuck if it's one thing and if it's $3, nigga, that's my $3. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And I want it. Right, damn. So, um... Yeah, yeah, we, we went through the lawyer thing and did what we had to do, you know, right. to get our shit returned to us, that now right. we are in control. We don't own it outright yet, but we own, you can't do nothing with it without, without our yeah. say so. God damn, that's that much type shit. Right. Um, we did a joint for Apple not too long ago for the iPhone 11, and they used our song. Wow. You know what I mean? And boom, you got to break, boom. So. That was a good look. Fucking A. Back Fucking then, a. they would have got all that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would have got all that money, I'm but not, we know better now. I'm not so. really understanding how you couldn't get a piece of Rapper's Delight. What, what was the business model that doesn't allow you to do that when he's clearly saying your name in the verse? The business model is the crook model. That's, that, that's the model, <laughs> motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, how can someone not say, <laughs> the he, crook he model plagiarizes shit, he the, got my name in it. The, the, these niggas don't, don't, don't know no better. Right. Rob them model. Yeah. Meaning them or you as them, well? Them. Okay. That whole record industry, yeah. come, I mean, that's part of the record business, especially back then. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Because none of us knew nothing. No, none that. of yeah. us knew right. shit. We was just happy to be on the record. Right. And that shit goes back to all the way back to, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. The artists from back in the day. Right. Okay. Yep. We just happy to do what we do and be on the record and get famous from it. We don't learn later on, you know, how fucked over we we been, you know, until it you know it sets in, right. sets in on all of us at some point. When you think about, it, I heard that like, back then that Sam Cooke was the only black man who owns his master, and then all of a sudden, no one can tell you how he died. All right. Facts. Like no one. Like can the same should they say about Prince? Yeah, I guess. I, I, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 As soon as you start talking that independent yeah. from the system shit. Yeah. You a target. Yeah. All right. In anything, you in anything. All right. I'm, you want to do another shot? I'm doing another All shot. Right. I did, I did. That, that's your drink. Let's do a shot, though. Let's do a shot. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Separate. You, you, want, you, want, you don't want the whiskey, do you? <laughs> no, you don't want to mix it up. Don't, don't mix it up. No, let me know if you want some whiskey. Come on, I'm on drink champ. Okay, all right, cool. Let's do it. 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 Now, this is that Japanese whiskey right there. All right. Here, if you want some ice in there, take some ice. I ain't want to touch it myself. Cheers, brother. Yeah, thank you, brother. Yo, it's a motherfucking Grandmaster Cash. This, 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 I'm mad. I'm mad happy, bro. I'm like a kid in a candy machine right now. Fuck I do with it? It's right there. It's in front of you. Salud, my brother. Salud. 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 Salud to you, man. Man. So. All right. This is a question I ask everybody who comes here. But you can actually really, really answer this question. Did you ever think hip hop would make it this far? No, but I always hoped that it, it, it would or could. You had the potential. Yeah, but yeah. And I'm, I'm stopping you for a second because why? 
Why? Because it was it just like a basement party type of thing when they first invented it? Or I, I'm curious to say, um, to, um, hear you. You, you, you got to understand. Yep. When we first started doing hip hop, people were looking at us like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, what, what the fuck I is you imagine. doing? I could imagine. You know, from the, from the dancing, you know what I mean? From the break dancing, especially. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What the fuck y'all rolling around on the floor for? <laughs> right. Fucking up your clothes. I, that was the attitude. Yeah, I fucked you know up my I mean? clothes a lot, yes. And then if you, and, and, and you can't go, to, you can't be in a party and ask a girl to dance, yo, what's up, shorty, you want to dance? And then break, bring her out to the dance floor and start spinning on the fucking floor, all right? Which <laughs> <laughs> is like, what the fuck is wrong with this nigga? You know what I mean? So if we was on our own with this shit for a while before it got cool to other people. Right. My, our parents, our friends, y'all ain't gonna never get nowhere doing that hibbity hobbity shit. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't even take the name of this shit serious. Go ahead with that hibbity hobbity shit. All right, motherfucking drug dealers. Oh, oh you gonna fuck with them hip hop niggas, huh? <laughs> oh, they tell her bitches, oh, yo, you gonna fuck with them hip hop niggas over there, huh? <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't a positive thing for a while, man. I mean, it today, cool it's the fucking biggest genre of music in the fucking That's world. Crazy. Had I known, let me see the light up. I would be a real dickhead if I sit here and tell you, yeah, I knew it would be this big, and I ain't got this much of a percent of the shit. Right, right. right. If I knew I had an inkling this shit would prove to the extent, I would own hip hop. I would name. own the name hip hop. Yes, yes, yes. yes, that's weird. Right. Everything you're, you're connected to this shit would have right. to go through me. Right, right. Right. Or at least me and my peers. Right. right. I mean, me, cool, hurt. hurt. You know what I mean? Flash. Flash. You know what I mean? Mel. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Like a council. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And have a union of this shit, and we would have had a hole on hip hop. Right. Whereas there can't be a hip hop chicken store in right. Baltimore. Right. Mm. I. I Hip hop motherfucking fried chicken, my nigga. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got the box in my house, yo. <laughs> Word. So, I mean, what other entity you know that anybody could just take it and right. just run with it and do what the yeah. fuck they want with it? That's real talk. Yeah. Hip hop. Re- you I'm- can't do that shit with nothing else. Yep. Let's see if I can ask Trey. So, because there were no, there was no organized, you know, mm. union. No, nobody sat down, set no rules, bylaws, or whatever. Nobody. Uh, 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 like trademark this shit. There's no mm-hmm. ownership of hip hop. Mm-hmm. Mm. So now it, it could be a hip hop, any fucking thing. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's that's nasty. But wasn't Zulu Nation trying to do stuff like that? Zulu Nation has always trying to organize hip hop. I mean, first, you know, through the family. You know, first making it a, a, a organization. You know, based on the principles of uh, peace, unity, love, and having fun. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. As far as a business model, you know, mm-hmm. it, that was based around Bambada and his, you know, musical endeavors and stuff like that mm-hmm. and other things they got into. But they did, what, what, what they did early on was unite us under one umbrella called hip hop. Mm-hmm. Hip hop didn't have a name when we started. Mm-hmm. We didn't mm-hmm. start out, let's do the hip hop thing. Mm-hmm. Nah, the name hip hop <coughs> came from a cadence in marching. Mm. Explain that, please. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Grandmaster Flash was playing at a party, all right? And one, a cowboy, Keith Cowboy, one of his MCs, may he rest in peace, was going into the army next day. So he's fucking with him on the mic. He's like, yeah, so and so. I forgot the dude's name. Somebody know, but I forgot his name. He was like, yeah, so and so, this and that. Yeah, you having a good time now. You partying now, but tomorrow, your ass gonna be getting up at the crack of dawn, like, here, ho, here, ho, here, yeah. ho. You know that cadence when they walk, here, yeah. yeah. ho, here. That's where hip hop came from. Wow. <laughs> it's fucking me up right now. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> And then that 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 cadence became repeated so much it became like a signature thing a here oh here, until hip hop the words hip hop form and right. then Lovebug Starsky was the one who really kind of took it over the top with the hip the hop the hip hip mm. the hop the hop the hop hip 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 hop was the most repeated phrase throughout our conversation wow. so wow. hip hop became the name of our culture. God damn, make some noise. <laughs> Now, moving around a little bit, we bouncing around. 
Something that I didn't know, um, uh, DJ Hollywood, right? I didn't know DJ Hollywood was considered disco. Why didn't you know that? Because what was the song that he had at one point? Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang. I don't want to go to my honey bun. And here she's some of that yum, yum, yum before, before I, I go, go to bed. bed. No doubt. I ain't know that that, that wasn't considered hip-hop. Well, Hollywood precedes hip-hop. Right. Mm. You know what I mean? And and Hollywood is kind of in a difficult place, but you know, between hip-hop and what happened before hip-hop. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He mm-hmm. was a, di- a direct influence on what came next. The next in, uh, generation of DJs, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, got whatever they got from DJ Hollywood. Because like T-Pain, Future, all of them people who use melodic music, got to kind of give it to Hollywood. Well, I mean, yeah, he was that, you know, crowd rocker, that c- call and response king. Wow. He, he had a rapport with the audience. He wow. was funny, and wow. he was like that. But... MCs, as we know MCs today, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you throw a beat on and these niggas get it in. Right. That didn't come until our generation. Wow. And um, there was a time if you went to a club that Hollywood was playing in, you couldn't get in with sneakers, yeah, first of all. You had to dress up. Have and your hair cut, Sean. And if they caught your ass breakdancing in that motherfucker, <laughs> they, you they, out. they broke you. Security. <laughs> <laughs> when I found that out, that shit hurt me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's part of the mystique why people say Hollywood is not, hip-hop, you know, yeah. is hip hop. He Because he precedes hip hop. But he definitely influenced hip hop. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I, I, can, I can see that. I can see that. So, um, what, what's your favorite part of hip hop? Is it making the record or performing the record? Um, records is not really my my forte, mm-hmm. so to speak. I haven't had a. I just haven't had that constant mm-hmm. studio environment that you know mm-hmm. a lot of artists have. Uh, for mm-hmm. like Pac, for example, when Pac came home, Pac lived in the studio for mm-hmm. two right. fucking weeks right. or, or months mm-hmm. or whatever. You know what I mean? And he went from studio to studio mm-hmm. to studio. And he, right. You know what I mean? Right. And in order to become that prolific, mm-hmm. you have to be in demand like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, LL Cool J, eleven albums. Who mm-hmm. the fuck? makes 11 albums. Who mm-hmm. gets to make 11 albums in hip-hop? Right, right. Maybe now, because you, independently, yeah, you yeah. can make 100 fucking yeah, but albums. Then, yeah, yeah. But 100, who gets right. signed to a label to 11 fucking album right. deal? And successful albums, yeah. too. Exactly, most mm-hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> come on, keep it 100, mm-hmm. mate. 100 being capped, let's right. go. <laughs> but, but, I mean, but, but that's the thing. So the opportunities mm-hmm. that you have, you know, have a lot to do with how productive you are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Be, today you can make a record in your house. You know I mean, it sounds just as good as you know. Yeah. No, you know some of them don't sound good. Some of them. Well, I mean, I ain't say all of them. Right? <laughs> I, mean, I think you could. I think you could. It could. It could. Yeah, because some of these shit. Right. Yeah. Some of these shit. I'd be like, yeah, you better go hire an engineer. Like, yeah, that just sound like One you made it in your house. Right? About, yo, I'm my engineer. I'm. My, you need an engineer, nigga. My, my <laughs> don't be bragging about being your own. But that's a bad reference to your engineer. So this is famous Jay Z line, right? He said, I'm overcharging niggas for what they did to the cold crush. Where are you at when you hear this? And is you saying, yeah? Or is you saying, nigga, what you talking about? Well, I'm going to tell you what happened. Okay. Uh, you know, Aisha the Izzo, you uh-huh. know, came out, boom, boom, this and this and that. So now my phone start ringing off the hook. Okay, yeah. Yo, yo, you heard Jay Z said he gonna charge you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it. I heard. It. Yo, Jay Z could like, like, like all day one of them type shit. <laughs> yeah. So like somebody, I was just sitting and somebody asked me, Yo, what you think about that Jay Z? You know, mm-hmm. overcharging. I said, I think, you know, he's robbing from the rich in the name of the poor. I love mm. that. I love that. I love that. Now, Robin Hood robbed from the rich and gave it to the poor. Right. There's a caveat. He robbed from the rich in the name of the poor. Like, I'm going to tax all you motherfuckers out there extra, okay, for what you didn't give these niggas right here. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But... 
he didn't give these niggas right. <laughs> right. He said it wasn't trickle down in Canada. <laughs> right. So, so what, what, what am I going to think of it? Right, right. I think it was a statement. Right, you know right, what right. I mean? It was, right. you know, Jay, he's a clever right. motherfucker. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, if a rhyme, when he, when he come to it, it's like, okay, right. Oh, all right, yeah, I'm going to throw that in. Mm. But, I mean, I, we didn't get a call from Jay, you know, mm. no, now bank accounts went up or none of that shit. So, right. it was just, a, you know, another clever Jay-Z line. Yeah. You know? No, but I understood what he was saying, but my point is this. Let me ask you. Was there a room, was you going through something with the label at that time, or? No, he's just saying in general. I'm, no, I'm no, saying. I, I, would, you, I would, first of all, mm-hmm. I would like to talk to Jay and be like, what did they do to the cold crush? Like, <laughs> right, nigga, that's what I'm asking. What you know <laughs> that we don't know, because right. I know they did something. <laughs> <laughs> I know they did something. <laughs> You know, and I know that they did something. <laughs> so, oh, holy moly! I'm like, you know what I mean. So, but I mean, there's a lot of industry secrets and shit like that right. that went on back in the days. Niggas mm-hmm. got blackballed for the mm-hmm. for the stuff. So you could have been fucking one of these niggas. Joints, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and for that reason, you don't get signed to a record mm-hmm. label or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. So, people are people wherever you go. So, right. there's a lot of reasons for people being where they are and mm-hmm. people not being where they are. Right. You know what I mean, and um, you, you, you do you believe in that, like blackball and shit in the industry? Yo, hell yeah. yeah? You okay. know, that knock exists. it off, no. I mean, knock it no, off. That no. exists, man. You yeah. hear? Listen, I'm gonna be honest. It. It might not be as it organized as you think it it's is. It's not as organized but it, as you it, think. It is. It's a thing when people tell people, like, like, yo, don't this, fuck this with This is how I look at it, in my, me, to me, in my opinion. There, it, there is something that exists, but then there's certain that shit that's just common sense. It's like, just give an example. A little Uzi Vert says, fuck Grandmaster Cats, right? And then wants to do drink champs that week. And we say, nope, we were Cats. People might take that as that's being blackballed. But that's just standing with my homie. But that is being blackballed too, though. No, no. If is, everybody stops fucking with right. you. But it's the beginning of, of that. that yeah. right. If you can't get signed to a record deal no mm-hmm. more, or if you ain't getting shows, or right. niggas ain't, your whole shit stopped, that's getting blackballed. Right, right. right. Yeah, I mean, if you, you might get blackballed from Nori's like show, that. but it ain't gonna stop your whole motherfucking right. machine from like, moving. Like for the, for the Even though this is a, that's a bad thing to get blackballed from Drink Chain. That's right, that's right. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, like, like for instance, me and Nas had a, 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 a little dispute back in the days, right? I didn't think he was blackballing me. I didn't think he sent out the message blackball. But at the same token, a lot of people did not want to stand next to me. <laughs> Why you beefing with Nas? I'm just being honest. I think that's a I, form of blackballing. I don't think. Nah. Okay. I, no, I, I it's think. Not. I think it is. I think See, it I don't could think be. That it's if not. people want to do business with you, and then they stop fucking with a person because. They want to do business with you, and they don't want to ruffle those feathers. To me, that's black, blackballing as well. You know what blackballing is? Blackballing mm-hmm. is when an executive tells a motherfucker, other executives, listen, mm-hmm. this nigga here, right here, or whatever, mm-hmm. such and such, this mm-hmm. and that, woo whoop. Don't fuck with him, all right? Just as a favor to me, don't fuck with him. Right, that's official black now, That's black, that's black, black, that's right. black boy. Now, I well, you, that. You, every door you go to get shut in your motherfucking right. face and you don't understand why. Yeah, I understand that. Because some nigga, you piss some nigga off. Some right. nigga of influence off. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I understand that. That I understand. And you don't believe that exists? No, I believe that exists, but not to the level, like I said, like to the level that, like, that we think, like, we just think, like, you make a diss record towards somebody, and then you you just you just blackball. It's not. It just everybody doesn't happen magically. Yeah, because everyone's really not that powerful. Like, the further you get... Nah, facts. You the facts, further you get, facts. like, you be realizing these, some of these dudes is Franks. Right. They just act like they... You know what I'm saying? Some of these dudes are straight bozos. You're like, this is who I looked up to? Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the, And the further you get kind of, you make your own rules. You know what I'm saying? You can get to a, a, a point where, like, I swear to God, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not bringing this up. I watched Dave Chappelle three days in a row go on stage and say the most craziest shit about transgender, about homosexual people, about just whatever the fuck he wanted to talk about. He talked about having a fight with a bitch that was a transgender. <laughs> and he, he said, yo, I didn't want to stop because I was winning. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, Dave is at the level where he doesn't, you can't cancel him. 
Right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. There are people her. that are at that level, yeah. like nigga. I, I could shit on, on your, on your, you on your, on your, on your car, motherfucker. You ain't. Listen, the shit that him and Donald Rollins was saying, I was looking like they're gonna cancel him. But then I thought about it. I said, this guy got forty million. He's gonna give a fuck about getting canceled. Right. Like so. That's what I'm saying. Like certain people make it to a certain, and he he's he just one of them. Like he talked about shit. Like I felt like I was in the '80s joking concert. You know what I mean? Remember back then, no one knew the proper words to say. No one knew not to say this, don't say this. Like he was just just, just going crazy. So I, I said to say that. I know I'm rambling. I'm doing another shot. We in? Let's go. Uh, yeah, goddamn, I'm doing another shot. So, Cass, Run DMC comes out. I did not know this was the drug dealer attire. Outfit, cause I, cause, I, but then you guys, your guys got eye patches, furs coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right, you're right. You guys got scarf over one eye, you know, the French shit, you so, know what I mean? So y'all looking at Russell DMC like, what's wrong with these niggas? Nah, w- what what happened was Russell patterned Run DMC sound behind mm-hmm. people like my group. Cold Crush Brothers, DMC, and Ron will tell you they self. They, you know what I mean? They mm-hmm. strive to be, mm-hmm. you know, like the Cold Crush Brothers. Mm-hmm. And, um, but Jay was the street dude. Jay was the one Jay with the style. Right. You know what I mean? He had this, the, this, the look of this. So, so they adopted his look. Mm-hmm. If you look at them in the early days, they had suit jackets on mm-hmm. and mock necks. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. and uh, so Jay kind of crafted suckers, their look. The, 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 the yeah, right, the plaid, yeah, yeah, the plaid, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, mm-hmm. so Jay kind of crafted their, their their look, and then from then on, you know, the Adidas thing, they just went through the roof with that. Right, that must have been the first time hip hop had a sponsor, right? Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, like, because like we was we was fucking with their products. But this is the first time. But they wasn't fucking with us. Wasn't right, right. With Nobody us. wasn't fuck. We wasn't getting right. no free sneakers right. nowhere. None of that shit. Right. We had to go to Jew Man on Southern Boulevard. Right. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. I need those in 13, man. I need two. I need two. Go right. in the back. Right. Go in the back. Right. God damn it. You taking a shot? Yeah. Salud, God damn it. Salud, God damn it. Salud. Salud. Salud to my hey. honey boy. All right. Hey. Let's talk a little bit about Wild Style. How was that? Yeah. Filming wow. that. Wild Style for me was like a, a stamp of approval mm-hmm. that, yeah, we wasn't wrong. Right. right. This shit is real. It right. is important. People right. do, you know, want to fuck with this. Um, when this guy, when Charlie Ahern came to our neighborhood and started scouting around and shit to see what was in up. In the Bronx. This is yeah, the, this in the, the Bronx. Bronx. This is, you know, a guy from Soho, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, down in the uh, Lower East Side, you know, artsy kind of dude. And this, this is the, this is, Boogie down Bronx, burnt down Bronx yeah, at this time. Yeah, this is where yeah. every house is on fire. All those, all those visuals that you see in the Bronx during that time, mm-hmm. that's during the time that we filmed Wild Star, early '80s. Wow. Wow. So, um, but but that was kind of like a, a stamp, you know, for us that a stamp of validation in a sense that the outside world thinks this shit is cool too, not just us. Right. They want to document this shit. Somebody wants to make a movie about this shit. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. and that was the first of right. Of, 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 well, yeah, there was a documentary about hip hop, but about mainly graffiti, right? And break dancing. What was the name of that? Style doc? Wars. Style okay, Wars. Okay, yeah, but that. this okay. was like a movie. With right. this was a movie. This right. was more of a docu movie documentary. Yeah, if, if kind of now thing. watching it, it looks it feels like a reality show documentary because it was like following you guys doing what you really do. Well, it's it's all the people that was really doing it. There's right. no actors except for the people, the non hip hop people in the movie. Everybody, right. every graffiti artist, every break dancer, every DJ, every MC was actually themselves right. in the movie. Wow. That's fucking fire. You watched Wild Style today, you said, right? Yeah, I got I got the VHS right here. I'm going to have him sign it. Let me see the VHS. Let me see the goddamn VHS, oh, shit, buddy. Man, that's Let me a... see the motherfucking VHS, buddy. You got it here? God Goddamn, this is, this is legendary right here. This is the original one that I got. Woo! Wow! <laughs> that's the original right there, man. Jesus. Yo, Fat Five Freddy always had white girls. <laughs> so, uh, yo, every time you bring up Fat Five Freddy, it's a white girl yeah, around him. Yeah, Freddy part of that artsy community, yeah, no, that artsy lower guy, east side. He's a legend, though. He's yeah, 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 a legend. Five we know you, Fat Five Freddy. Facts. I wrote, I wrote uh, one of his first rhymes. Get out of here. Yeah, man. I, oh, yeah. Jesus. I'm taking this shit. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I get, you get Sharpie or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
we'll do it before we leave. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Wild Style really, really kind of validated the whole movement. And it, 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 first time we went on tour. Wow. First time we all got on a plane together, and it was like 25 of us mm. went to Japan. Wow. Sucky, for, sucky. For like a lot three of sucky, weeks. sucky, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Japan Oh, yeah. A lot of motherfucking episodes. Yeah. A lot of, you know, a lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, the first time we was in front of that kind of press, mm -hmm. it was like everywhere we went, it was a, the cameras following us. You know what I mean? What? Let me... Let me don't I feel like overseas love us more? Oh, much more. Much more, right? I, I think it's because they got a greater appreciation to see us for much. our art form because they're not connected to it. Wow. You know what I mean? It doesn't come from them. They're right. like outsiders looking in. So when they, when we come there, it's like, ah, those are the people it's like that like living do history that thing. for them. Uh, I, I, I'll right. give you a perfect example. When we went to um, Japan in 82. Okinawa? No, we went to Tokyo. Tokyo. And, 82. Uh, uh, There's a department store called Cebu that sponsored the tour. Mm -hmm. So we went to, uh, we were just hitting different places. We were doing outdoor venues. They would build like a stage in like an hour, and it's like a big stage and sound system, and mm -hmm. we would go on and break dance and rap and DJ, oh. and then they'd take the whole shit down before we left, like the whole shit be gone. That's how efficient they were back, wow. in, back then. And um, <clears throat> we would, I, I, it would, when they showed the movie in the theater, we would come out on the on the, on the stage after the movie, and the whole the wow, whole stop. place it was showed. Up. Okay, yeah, wow. the whole the whole movie theater just went bananas. Wow. So we was like the, the talk of Tokyo, and we introduced hip hop to Japan. Wow, personally, just from that movie and that tour. Wow, we went to clubs. DJ still had the big thick rubber mat on the motherfucking turntables. Wow, and we would get on turntable and be like, "Yo, could we? Could, you know." Cause you can't cut take, with the rubber hell mat. Hell no! You take that yeah, shit off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you gotta take. You gotta take it. You gotta <laughs> put the, the mat on. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Mm -hmm. These niggas looking w w in amazement, like, what the fuck is y'all doing? Right. But by the time we left Japan, oh, it was on it. When right. we revisited those right. clubs, they was doing that right. too. Right. Little kids was breakdancing in the street because right. they saw Crazy Legs and them right. do an exhibition in the street. So we actually were the first impression. On, on Tokyo for hip hop, that movie Wild Style and that tour that took us out there. Wow, that's fucking amazing, yo. Facts. Yeah, that's amazing. You, you think Wild Style, like before Wild Style, how much do you think the culture really felt that it was all these elements were the culture? Because there's people that argue like these elements were put together to be hip hop. I think I think they were they were gathered together because of their their um, their continuity between each other. Uh, a lot of DJs and graffiti writers, or, or b boys, or MCs, or such and such, and so into you know the, those those uh, elements are interwoven right. within hip hop, and they say that graffiti is not an element of hip hop because graffiti's been going on since the beginning of time. Okay, yes, we do understand that, but like I've said over and over again, my quote: hip hop didn't invent anything. Hip hop reinvented, reinvented everything. Mm. Absolutely. Okay. Mm. There's nothing new under the sun. We ain't do nothing new. Right. People, people played music before us. People right. danced before us. People talked and rapped Rhymed, before yep. us, right. just like we do. Right. Did it way before we did. Okay, but this is our generation's reinvention mm. of those elements, and that is what hip hop is. Wow. God damn, it makes it <laughs> now, I gotta ask, how did you come up with the name Grandmaster Cast? Because like you, you can, everybody can't call themselves a grandmaster. Nah, I mean you can, you can try, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But the origin of Grandmaster, as far as hip hop is concerned, the first hip hop, the first DJ named Grandmaster was Grandmaster Flowers, and Grandmaster Flowers inspired Grandmaster Flash. Um, Flash was taught by Pete DJ Jones, who was also a legendary DJ in hip hop. Flowers, um, Flash adopted Flowers' uh, moniker, Grandmaster Flash. How I became Grandmaster, my original name in hip hop was Casanova, Casanova Fly. Yeah, we established okay. that. DJ MC Casanova Fly. Now, one night I'm playing in my spot, the Blue Lagoon in the Bronx, Webster Avenue, 108th Fork. 
me and my man Disco Wiz, and I got some. Um, yeah, by the so way, my, everyone had the dopest names back in the day. Yeah. Disco Wiz. This, this, this. No I'm doubt. I'm just sorry. I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, Disco yeah. Wiz, Grand Wiz, and Theodore. Now, everybody you know need the baby. Everybody <laughs> need the baby now. Oh, baby, little baby, little baby guy. <laughs> Big baby, regular baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm cutting up a record. Now, back then, Flash was the fastest DJ. Mm. Or, you know, known throughout hip hop. Right. Mm -hmm. That's when everybody and their grandmother wasn't a DJ. Mm -hmm. All right? Hip hop community was small. Right. Grandmaster Flash, fastest man on two turntables. Mm -hmm. Right? So one night, I'm cutting up a record. I think it was I Can't Stop. And um, I'm cutting it back and forth. Eh, tap. Cause that do, do. Cat, 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 do, that do. Eh, cat. I just kept catching it. My man was like, yo, faster, 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 faster. The crowd was going faster, faster, faster. Then he started going, Grandmaster, Grandmaster, Grandmaster. The crowd started going, Grandmaster, Grandmaster. That's when I became Grandmaster. Oh my God. That was mad vivid. Too. That was vivid. I was there. I was there. I was there. Oh, I does this. We got to shout out the Organic Food Kings. Oh, yes. I just ate something for all the guys. Food looks shrimp. incredible. We got the truck outside at Organic Food Kings. Make sure you check them out. Yeah, that's right. right. We're going to be eating them all the time right now. <laughs> Come on, Russell Priest. Bring your ass in there. Hey, hey. Come on, Russell hey. I'm going to tell you something. Let me move this out the you, way. You I must have made the easiest Netflix money ever. <laughs> what do you mean? I watch. Listen, I don't know if you ever saw State Property 2. Anybody who knows me when they watch State Property 2, they say, Nori, you cheated. And then I'll say, why did I cheat? Because I didn't act at all. I was just, <laughs> I was just me. That's the way When to do I it. watched The Indian Detective, I said, it's... This guy, no, this is true. It's really, he got a real show. It is fucking phenomenal. Yeah. I just told you. I watched the whole season. Yeah. Uh, right. I said, this guy's just being him. It's the easiest check ever. Come yeah. on, keep it real. That's keep how you real. gotta do it. <laughs> you gonna see your Indian father. It's very cliche. You gonna see your Indian father. Yeah. He's sick. <laughs> they don't wanna tell you he's sick. He was you fake know? sick, too. <laughs> he was fake sick. Yeah. It was crazy. Uh, I loved it. Come on, make some noise for the Indian detective. Go hey. see it. <laughs> It's on Netflix, streaming it's right now. It's on Netflix. It sounds very racial, but it's not, ironically, because he's actually an Indian detective. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, well it's called the Indian detective because <laughs> I'm an actual detective in Toronto, and then I end up becoming a detective in India. In India. Oh. That's, why, that's why. It's not like I'm walking around going, I am here to solve the crime. It's not, <laughs> it's not that at all. I you can do know, that why, one, too. That's the why did Fat Joe gain the wig back? You know, like, what Holy moly, Guacamole. So how do you how you know how you know Kaz? <laughs> Kaz, so yeah. Kaz, I met from Mel. Melly Mel, Mel. Mel and I uh, have been friends for about 16, 17 years. Wow. And then he brought Kaz. He goes, hey man, and we was like, yo, Russ, all right. I'm gonna bring a. <laughs> we gonna go out and eat. I go, yeah. He goes, I bring Kaz with me. I go, like, he fuck yeah. Are you crazy? Hell yeah. You just bring say Kaz. Melly Mel's like, yeah. <laughs> in a minute. I just make him say it for no reason. <laughs> How's your throat feel? A little rough. <laughs> <laughs> my 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 impression of Melly Mel is a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. So you met him through Melly Mel. I met him through Mel, and then we, you know, we had dinner. We we all had a great time. And then right. it, it just it, it stayed from there. All right. God damn it. That's that's. Let me, let me, let me. And now you know. Know, mm -hmm. Kaz, Kaz and I are very close, and you know I know his, I, I, I'd say I know his whole family, but he's got too many kids to know the whole family. But yeah. uh, <laughs> he's working on it. Yeah. He's working his way up the tree. It, it sounds yeah. like he got some kids in Japan. He don't know about. Hey, he might. He <laughs> might have somebody. <laughs> They're break dancing. <laughs> you, just, you can see his face when he's described Japan. I say, you got some nookie nookie. nookie? He said, yeah. Big snake <laughs> on the in the in the pantry. In the pantry. Right. <laughs> I gotta relax. Oh, I'm gonna take, oh, um, Russell, would you like um? Jap 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 sure Jap we gotta get okay. Russell. Talking man. about Japan? Yeah, yeah. Talk about Japan. As we talk about Japan. That's a That's great right. transition. Yeah. As some Japanese motherfuckers. That's would you right. like it in shot form or we wanted to drink that? I would like to start with a beverage. Okay, I don't know what that <laughs> to means. Sip, to sip okay, on to one. Sip? With okay, a, right, maybe cool. with a rock get, get or two. Man in a cup. Get this man a cup, please. Yeah, thank you. Hey, so Nori, yeah, um, congratulations. Yeah, that's man. a smoke champs, please smoke it up. Smoke it up. That's you, guys. Smoke it up. Smoke it up. Smoke it up, goddammit. You know what I'm saying? Grandmaster Cass. Yeah, I need about 40 of these. Yeah, we got you, man. <laughs> we got you.
Well, we got you, man. Let me throw a couple of rocks of ice. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to touch ice. That's all I don't give a shit. I don't like to touch another man's ice. I'm sorry. Speaking of ass and shit, listen, I appreciate you. This is for you, my brother. That's right, goddammit. And Nori. Yes, please. Nori, this is for you. I know you would appreciate this. Yes, I will appreciate anything. You know what I mean? This is my company. Woo! Oh, Queens, only yeah. only guacamole. I'm gonna not match it everything. I'm gonna put it on right now. All right. <laughs> Throw it on right now. Come during on. during the pandemic. The pandemic. Oh, I got very I got cre- very creative. Uh huh. And I started coming up with different things that you know. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. That's all right. Woo! That goes with the thing. Yeah. I ain't well, that's, that's, you know what I mean? You know how I get down. Mm-hmm. But um, one of the things was the clothing, you know, company, and I started uh-huh. making up T-shirt designs okay. and stuff like that that was uh-huh. relevant to our era that people don't really uh, do mm-hmm. and uh, I partnered with this guy and he started you know we start collaborating so those mm-hmm. are uh, just part mm-hmm. of the hat collection and uh, we made that especially for you because we got a bron- we got a joint that, that says Bronx keeps creating it mm-hmm. and you know how the shit normally yeah, goes yeah. you'll say, <laughs> yeah, well, you'll say Queens, Queens ain't, ain't never faking it thank you goddamn okay. thank you goddamn so yeah, let's, let's talk about that because when, I, when, I, when I'm doing my research, it almost seemed like, I don't want to say Cool Herc didn't create hip hop. It seems like Cool Herc had these parties that was famous that people started to go to where he was playing this music. But then there was you guys who came after that, and you mm-hmm. guys had your own parties. Right. Is that somewhat accurate? Yeah, let me get the light on. But go ahead. When Cool Herc was DJ, and he was kind of the big guy. Because what was it? It was like August 19th? August so like 11th. August which is, 11th. Which is the anniversary like the of hip hop is coming up in a few days. Okay, so Did he first start with the, Was he the tomorrow. one that started doing the breaks? Okay, you here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The anniversary of hip hop is tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Yeah. And it's hip hop month now, supposedly, in the government, really? right? They we got created, a whole month now? Yeah, they created oh, hip hop yeah, month. Yeah, let's make it Black History Month. I think it's August. It's August. Wow, they gave you a well, good long month. August, August, so, August, so August 11th is supposed to be the first hip hop party ever, right? right? The first documented hip hop party. Hip hop. Now party. let me ask you: Were you there? Documented. No, I wasn't. Okay, all right. Cool. And I don't never claim to be. <laughs> you know what I mean, and a lot of people claim to be there. Yeah, I was yeah. there, nigga. Yeah, they got to be She was dope. <laughs> Yo, the, the fucking room was wasn't as big as this space <laughs> right here. It's not even okay. as big as this room. <laughs> it ain't. It's huh. not as big. You can mm. fit, fit about 60, 75 people in no there. No fucking way you fit that many. If they dance real close together. Right. You know what I mean? And um, it was more of a family thing. Like, everybody knew everybody that was there. 25 mm-hmm. cents for girls, 50 cents for guys to get in. All right? This is back when the dime bag was a dime? Exactly. All right, cool. <laughs> pillows. <laughs> yeah, pillows. <laughs> but um, the thing that's not that Herc invented hip-hop, Herc inspired hip-hop for the people that mm-hmm. eventually became the hip-hop. Like, Herc inspired me. Right. Herc inspired Flash. Flash. Herc inspired Bam Melly Bada. Mel. Melly Mel. Bam right. You know what I mean? Every, you know what I mean? There was only one rival like DJ to Herc back then. His name was Smokey. Mm. And these people don't talk about Smokey a lot. Smokey no, and the Smokatrons. Wow. All right? And they I've used to battle Herc in the PAO. Smokey could fuck with him because he had the records and he had the sound system. I never heard of this, yo. I'm trying Word? to tell you. It was another DJ. For Disco Smokey King Jamaican. Mario. Okay. okay, from from uh, Bronx there, Disco King Mario was a force over there. Okay, you know what I mean. So these guys in their perspective areas held it down. Right. But if you had to put them all together, they couldn't fuck with Herc's sound system. Right. Right. So let me, cause let me ask you, right? Plus me being from Queens, is this only happening in the Bronx at this time? Well, here's the thing. Because I know you went we, downtown at we, some point. At yeah, at some point. But but I want to be the first to say that I am the last motherfucker to try to say that hip-hop was only going on in the Bronx. Wow. Okay? Put us this on. kind of energy exists within us as a people. And there's nothing that we're doing that somebody ain't over there doing at the same motherfucking time. Right, right. Okay? So you, I know that there was DJs in Brooklyn. Okay? I know that there was DJs in Queens. I, saw I know there was DJs in Manhattan. So okay. Shan wasn't wrong when he thought that hip hop. No, Shan didn't, started didn't out say hip hop started 
for for Shan, for Shan. Right, right, right. hip hop started right, out in the park, and yeah. you can't dispute that for nobody. Right. You know, for Russell, hip hop started somewhere you know different. Alex, He's done Alex. his research to know beyond that, but he can only tune in from a certain perspective. Especially mm-hmm. back I mean? then, where there's, you can't really communicate the way we communicate. Yeah, and he's from Canada too. That's true. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold it. Two, two strikes. <laughs> two strikes. <laughs> no, with you. He's, he's the Indian detective. Leave him alone. <laughs> <He's the Indian laughs> I've done my detective work. Here. Yeah. But. So, okay, um, no, but so I, I want to go back to, okay. to the question. Who was the first one that was cutting the brakes? That was bringing the brakes bring, yeah. back to create that, that break beat, that long break beat for the B-Boys and B-Girls to dance to. Herc played them first. Yes. And then the other DJs like Flash and Theodore and Breakout uh, perfected how to play them. Because right. Herc could play a record, and then when the break go off, at lift the needle up and put it back to where the record yeah, started. Yeah, yeah. Or just mix in a whole nother record that sound totally different. Herc wasn't cool, didn't have those smooth blends. Right. He didn't have the, you know, turntable um, mechanics that DJs right. that followed him did. Right. So now uh, Grandmaster Flash looks at the playlist that Herc is playing and saying, okay, I'm going to get all those records, but I'm going to play them and do it and do this to him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Grand Wizard Theodore says, oh shit, Flash, you gonna leave your equipment in my brother house <laughs> unguarded? He gets up on the turntable right. and invents scratching. Right. Okay? So everybody kind of added to this thing that eventually became the culture itself. Mm. But our, the person we looked, looked up to was Cool Hurt. And even later on, he could be an asshole, okay? But he is the father of hip hop right, as far as him. everybody that you respect in hip hop is concerned. Right, right. Okay, so you can create another narrative and you can take it somewhere else. Right. Because like I said, nothing nothing happens in no place New. Want, you know, by itself. Right. But when they started to document hip hop, why did they come to the Bronx? Right. When they started to Want, want to know about this and start to if you look at the history of this all this why does it always lead back to us right this, this leads me to my next question right there's a couple of books that said that it actually started in Harlem is there any truth to that I think it's simultaneously there was a movement going on in Harlem as mm-hmm. well Proximity. but Harlem was influenced by Hollywood Harlem DJ Hollywood the, DJ Hollywood yeah, Okay, okay, okay Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang Harlem. I don't wanna go Texas, man, but my honey bun Give me some of that Young, you young, young people I go to bed <laughs> I used to always wanna do that record over I used to always wanna hey, do that record over Hey, you probably yeah, still It's not can. too late for that yeah. uh, I'm, I'm but, out of the record business <laughs> but, <laughs> but the personality of the Bronx is You know, we come from burnt down buildings and right. you know and shit like that and Harlem's mentality is hustle right you know the drug dealers the you know the hustle lifestyle to get money you know what I mean the cars and all that so Harlem's attitude toward the Bronx is like the niggas broke up there <laughs> and and I've heard Hollywood say that himself yo <laughs> shit niggas in the Bronx was broke oh, niggas wasn't do- you know what I mean because we, we we had a different mentality we right. We was the creative mentality, you know what right. I mean? And the hustle mentality was the dope dealers and the drug dealers. So we created hip hop so we didn't have to be drug dealers and dope dealers. Right. So now all the drug dealers and dope dealers is in hip hop. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It, but yeah, originally hip hop was made out of those people that, you know, mm-hmm. we don't want we don't want to do that. We're gonna do this. Mm-hmm. And when everybody was saying, yo, fuck that shit, fuck that shit, we was we, all right, fuck y'all, we're gonna do it anyway. So you know, let me like, ask you. In these neighborhoods and these parties that was coming out, was it only locals or was there people? What was there? Because when I looked at a couple of the before this, I'm looking and they say these are early hip hop parties, and I'm seeing white people there. Is these white people that lived in the hood? I don't know how early. Okay, or um, this, is this for the sequel? But y'all? most early, early okay. blacks and Puerto Ricans. That's it. You know what I mean, right? Okay. Jamaicans, Caribbeans, whatever alternatives. You know what I mean? Alternatives. Maybe a couple. Was Cubans. Maybe a couple Italians. Did, you know yeah, did he say Cubans alternatives? Or or <laughs> swam over. <laughs> <laughs> sure did. But yeah, but yeah, but basically, you know, that's what it was. And but it wasn't until, <laughs> like, not to say it became cool, but when it started reaching out past our neighborhoods, you know, white people started getting involved as well. It's a couple of white. Early white dudes in hip hop try to DJ or rap or 
You know what I mean? So the the, the influence is just great. So um, and then also I'm I'm watching uh, uh, Evolution of Hip Hop, and I think it's Grandmaster Flash who says, you know what? He's gonna start taking it downtown. Was that considered whack for y'all to go downtown, or was that like, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna follow the bag. I, now I, basically, Bambada. And when we say downtown, we're not saying Harlem. No, no, we're, we're talking about downtown. Talking downtown, downtown Manhattan. Not, not yes. Harlem, Manhattan. Yeah, Manhattan. You know what yeah. I mean? The Roxy and, yeah. and those punk rock clubs. The Roxy was downtown? The Roxy was on 118th Street. Roxy was a road. Oh, that's Harlem. 18th Street. Oh, 18th Street. No, 18th Street. I was going to say 118th Street. 18th Street. I was like, that's Harlem. And, and, the, and the punk rock clubs, what you're saying. CBGBs. Those are the places that used to let have hip hop parties. That first st- started entertaining hip hop right. as a culture. Yeah. Wow. First the dancers really opened them up. Wow. And then the dancers need DJs. So the d- scratching of the DJs. Right. See, the, the, the punk rock era and the hip hop era started rising up at the same time. Right. And, both them, now. and both of them, was, both of them was, was the rebellion. <laughs> Counterculture shit. Right, right, to the music right. that preceded right. it. So prior to hip hop, it was disco. So you know, hip hop is like fuck disco. We're gonna do this. Right. Punk rock is like fuck rock. We're, we're gonna, gonna do, do this. this. Right. So mm. those same energies was was mm. kind of coming together at the same time. So that's what opened up the door for hip hop to come down into those clubs, into those early punk rock clubs, mm. and then promoters uh, grasp on to the b boys. Mm-hmm. The b boys is what captured everybody's imagination mm. as far as drawing them into hip hop. Mm. Gave them a visual need music to dance off. Right. Then the DJs became a, a mainstay. You know mm. what I mean? So the rap element was really the last element to really kick in, as far as people really digging this whole shit as a, as a whole. And downtown, the b boys led the way. So what you think uh. about when okay, all this music is going now? There's this group called the Beastie Boys who are deliberately saying they're not from the hood. That's the person. result of what he's talking about. The, the, yeah, the punk that's, rock that's, meets yeah, hip-hop. Yeah, that's, that's why. That's why I, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's alley Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the Beastie pre- started as a punk band, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are. That's what they come from. And and, I, and, and I'm going to be honest. I mean... Be honest, please. Earlier, we all, I mean, from the time these the next generation came out, we understood that our, our era was over. And... The more people came out, the the worse, you know, it got. Mm. I'm not the worst, but the farther away it got from, from what source. from what we were, from the source. Right. Exactly. So the Beastie Boys for me and for some of us was kind of the defining moment, like, okay, this shit is gone. Okay. It's gone. It's, so at know. first was you like, all right, that's cool, or you was like, man, they they wildin'. Well, yeah. It was like college dorm rap. I mean, it but was like, it, who the fuck related it became to college? Like, in the like, okay, hood? you could do anything. There's no, there's no norm. There's no, you know, we weren't, we weren't kumbaya on this shit, man. Uh. Everybody look at, you know, hip hop like, oh, those guys were, <laughs> and nigga, this shit was cutthroat, man. It was everybody <laughs> for everybody, everybody for themselves. Uh-huh. If I'm down with Russ and y'all, y'all down with each other, we don't mm. fuck with y'all. Mm. We fuck with each other. Mm. Yo, you might fuck with him, but right. we don't fuck with y'all. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. As a whole. Wow. And, and that's, that's how it was, you know, and it wasn't until later on, you know, now we all in the same boat, motherfucker. Right. And now this shit, you know what I mean? We, we all old school now, <laughs> motherfucker. Yes, 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 we all. We, ain't no, ain't, you ain't on tour, nigga. You right here in the hood with us, you know what I mean? You ain't none of that shit. Right, right, right. So, because we kind of bonded, right, <laughs> you, know, you know, under over, you know, the shit we had in common that the, our shit done fucking sell. So, Anybody who kind of reached beyond that 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 next era, uh, let's like Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, for example, mm-hmm. um, kind of went beyond that first school of hip hop and into the next. You know, because because they had commercial success mm-hmm. as far as records is concerned. And there's a couple of light skins in there too. Right. Well, I learned. <laughs> yes. And that, you know what I mean, but. They did, I mean, the, the next crew, like I said, when the Beastie Boys came in, it was like a more of a signal, like, mm. this is getting further away from us, you know what I mean? Right. Because and, and we, although we, not, we don't have no control. Run DMC has success, but the, you still you identify with Run DMC. This was how they you know, y'all dressed before y'all got to the club. Beastie Boys was something that was, was, was different. Well, I think the Beastie Boys was a novelty, you know, mm. like to offset the you know, Run DMC. Anytime there's a black group, that has mm. a success in business. They create a white p- counterpart group mm. to rival that success or to surpass it. 
and mm. which the Beastie Boys did surpass the success, mm. commercial success mm. of Run DMC. But if you own both entities, then it's a no lose right. situation win -win. for you. Well, 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 Run DMC wasn't technically on Def Jam. No, 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 no. But it's all no, Rush. No, I know yeah, that. It's all Rush. Yeah, it's all Rush. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Rush, yeah. You know, mm. so. Uh, and, and so for us, it was like, you know, there it is. And then as as everybody started coming in, it was like a fucking parade. You know what I mean? It was, and the LL came and then, oh, it's a rap now. <laughs> right. It's a rap now. Right. But it started, I mean, for me, at some point, it started getting cool. It was like, you know what? These are the next niggas, man. All right. These are the niggas. And I would see things in me that I know, mm. you, you might not know, but... Mm. You got that shit from me. I can mm -hmm. see me in mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what kept me attached to the shit. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody that come out is part of me. Right. Know it or not, right. everybody yeah. trace back. Talk that talk. To me. Talk that talk. Yep. There we go. I'm taking another shot for that. So, I'm, uh, and then we're going to do something called Quick Time with Slime, but I want to ask you real quick. Because as I did the research, like I said, I, I, I boiled down to more <clears throat> of n not really Cool Herc on, on records, but Cool Herc on parties, like throwing these jams that people were coming to. Then I started to realize that it was like you, African Bambada, uh, Grandmaster Flash. But this is these parties. These tapes were, were circulating of these, are you guys actually partying? Is that accurate for what, I, what I'm saying? Like. There was one mixtape <clears throat> that started circling around. Okay. Uh, in the, I think in the early '80s or the late '70s. Okay. That's the one that everybody credits Kaz for. That's mm. like that's when, if you hear DMC do an interview, he always be like, Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking every about. Every single but, time, he's like, I had that tape and, <laughs> <laughs> and it changed my life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't get what you was doing to like that. Right sounds just like, <laughs> like <laughs> hey, Master Kaz. Changed my mind. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Nori, let me tell you. <laughs> yo, salute, Sorry, salute to DMC, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, he oh. just sent me these, yo. So, uh -huh. so what I'm saying is, um, it was it, these tapes. The tapes that were circling around, or circling around. Was it battle tapes or was it party tapes? It was party tapes and okay. battle tapes. Okay, yeah. You know, at first, um, I mean, I go back to when. If you live in my hood and you wanted a, a, a b-boy tape, like the, uh. the jams that you hear at the parties, but mm -hmm. you ain't got, come to my house. Mm -hmm. Sit on the sit on the couch. What's your name? What's your girl name? Where you live at? What school you go to? Mm -hmm. Who's your man's in them? Mm -hmm. All right, boom. All right, turn around, get on the mic, turn my shit on, and then play great beats and, and just talk about the nigga throughout the tape. All right, twenty dollars. Mm. All day. Now, it wasn't until we started doing parties and, and, and recording the entire party, those are the motherfucking tapes that started spreading right. and became kind of the, like the holy grail yep. of, of hip hop. If you want to trace the sound, if you want to hear live hip hop at its earliest point, you've got to have one of those cassette tapes. It goes back to those cassette Which tapes. Which got sampled all throughout till now. People mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah. Those. Oh, yeah, yeah. People use it frivolously. And yeah. like I said, if we would have had a control of that shit, people couldn't just, people would get paid for that. You know what I mean? But I've heard numerous samples from old school tapes. I think I'm on one for, uh, Beck. Mm. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Really? And what do you sample? It's me talking at a party. At Beck? The, at, Beck, yeah. we need to, we, Grandmaster Kaz needs to check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beck. Get the check, Beck. <laughs> I yeah, saw. So, so, yeah, I mean, those, those, that was how people first heard hip hop live. You so, know? Let me, so let me ask you, right? Um, this controversy thing came out. We had KRS One on here, and when we asked KRS One about this, it, it, this was like three days old. So you know KRS, he'd be on boats. He didn't know what was going on when we asked him this question. But it was a controversial thing that came out about African Van Bottom, right? This is ripped the, the thing off the thing. This is one of our forefathers of hip hop. But it wasn't only just one thing. It wasn't only just one person. It was a couple of people that came out and, and with these allegations. What, what, did, what did you think of that? Um, I thought it was crazy. I mean, like everybody else. I know at some point, people, you know, it was going around that the hip-hop community knew about 
this and the hip hop community didn't know about this. Nobody had no evidence, no. Um, this is what I want to care about. Everything was pretty much speculation because you, you, Bam, you never see Bam with, a, you know, mm -hmm. females that mm -hmm. much, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, or or uh, a lot of young guys used to be around Bam, like, you know, like he had a, a little legion of, of young cats around him from, from Zulu. Mm -hmm. But other than that, nobody. You know what I mean? Right. You, nobody no so for for somebody to say that everybody knew or it was a well known fact. Nah, it was no shit like that. I was just as shocked and surprised right. as every fucking body else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, real talk. So we're gonna do this this called Quick Time with Slime. It's a very you you, you just answer one or the other. For both of you guys. And if you say if you say both, you take a shot. If you say uh not, neither, you take a shot. Uh <laughs> But if you, you answer, then you no don't shot. take a shot. All right, cool. So you, you want you want to get your shots lined up? We're, get, we're joining. We're joining. Yeah, we're joining. Shots. We're joining. Where's we're my Japanese whiskey? Let me get the Man. Japanese whiskey. Ah, yeah. You see not everybody. He, ask the man. The man is right here. Yeah, bro. Ask him what, he, what, what kind of shots you want to do. I might as well do Hennessy. Yeah, yeah. keep it That's Hennessy. That's what I'm drinking. With the shot. Yeah. Uh, nah, I'll do whiskey because I don't Do whiskey, goddamn. Remember last time I was on? Yeah. I don't. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just shot a shot. Can you yeah, yeah. Shot hey, give him a shot glass, please? No. Um, anybody got the shot glass? Right there. Where? I think we used them all. We need some more. All right, cool. We ready? No. Nah. All right, instead of asking me <laughs> both. <laughs> you have to wait. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Noriega. All right, cool. Oh, you need a shot glass. That's yeah. right. Okay. No problem. And by the way, go watch The Indian Detective, y'all. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah smoke that, please. Yeah, I'm well, We got Grandmaster Cass. Hey! 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 Holy uh, moly guacamole, baby. Let me get the light. Oh, I got you, man. Yeah, somebody else give us a lighter, man. We over here. Yeah. We got a lighter sponsor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Nori. Huh? Tell Nori what you want. Yeah, we're going to bust one of these bottles. Okay, give me a cup. I'm going to fill you up right now, baby. <laughs> we got to keep the culture alive, God damn it. You know what I mean? And we also got black owned Ducey's over here, too. We got some rock, too. All black owned. We got Mama Wana. Mama Wana. Hello, me away. We got Hello, me away. What is that? Dominican. It's a Dominican. It's Dominican. Ah, yeah. it's, it's rum. To. It, no, no, this no one, one no. knows what it is. No, 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 this one has rum in it's it. Mama it's Mama has rum in it. <laughs> Ain't that the shit with like drink three root? Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's yeah. rum and herb. You, you <laughs> can do voodoo with this. Yeah, it's, it's all good. Yeah. yeah. You know what's crazy? Then uh, the other day, I got a little fucking bottle of marijuana in my fucking crib. Oh, it just appeared at your house? I don't know. A little elf, have, a little have, elf uh, left it there. Yeah, I thought somebody, I thought some shit was gone wrong with the bottle I had in my house. With the bark Because the fucking bark was growing. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I don't drink The more it grows, the better it is. Yeah, I'm good. It's alive. I heard it makes yeah, fuck a shot glass. Just, here, just, just take that one. All right. Yeah, but, but pour a shot though, motherfucker. All right. All right. Cool. Are you ready? This one is gonna be very. I know. What you, I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna say. Okay. Jay Z or Nas? Jay Z. Oh, because he overcharging niggas for what they did to the coke crash. Facts. God damn it. Jay Z or Nas, Russell? That's a tough question for me. It is? Yeah, because oh, that's a, that's a Jay has the longevity, mm. but to me, Nas has the better voice. Mm. So you're taking a shot for that? I guess I'm taking a shot. Okay, take a shot for that. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. It's mad complicated. Mm. DMX or Tupac? We're all right. DMX. You see him looking over you, right? You don't see him looking over you? Oh, yeah. All right, so, ask you the same question. Oh, shit, nah, I didn't, but yeah, DMX. For me, it's X all day. Okay, cool. All right, my guy. So that's no shot, okay. <laughs> 80s hip-hop or 90s hip-hop? If I had to pick, if I had to pick one over the other, and I wasn't from either era, 90s hip hop. Mm. You got me on that one, I did not think. 90s golden era. 90s, okay, all right. Golden era. All right, run DMC or the locks? Locks. Wow. wow. He said that quickly, two bunny style. That guy, I love the locks, but I gotta ride with run DMC on this. You got the hat. He's run yeah, DMC yeah. or the locks? I mean, 
as far as like lyrical or whatever, and, whatever. And, no, 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 it's whatever your criteria. Yeah, the locks. Okay, yeah, the locks. All right, podcast or radio? Podcast. Mm. Podcast. Since I have one, culturally canceled. All right, this is <laughs> out now. Out now. Subscribe. I have radio. Apple podcast. Apple podcast. Rock Kim. Or Big Daddy K. Mm. That's tough. You do get to take a shot if you don't want to answer. It's okay. Or if you say both, you know that. I like how you stuck. By the way, I, lo I love that. I love that. It made me know you thinking. Let me help. Let me help with the criteria. Live is one thing, and on records another thing. I uh, will we'll, we'll do that another shot. <laughs> Let's stick to the program. With the, the fact that you're thinking about it that much, just take the shot, bro. Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I gotta go Kane as well. Okay. And that's, you're saying the live aspect. I'm, I'm speaking based on live because right. I've seen Rock Kim a couple of times, and I love Rock Kim. All right. Rock Kim is a fucking game changer. Yeah. 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 You know what Absolutely. he did? He slowed everything the fuck down when everybody was screaming and shit. He yeah, this is that. This is that. Before he became a team. Like, he bought the microphone uh, instead of cones. Or some cool cream. shit. Yeah. You know the what I mean? And, and he made his pieces, own lane. Pieces of the puzzle. Complicated. I can't be mad at him, but I'm, I'm a lyricist and, and and proud to say that one of the people that Rock Kim looks up to as a mentor. God damn. As far as lyrically, you God know what damn. I mean, and being an MC, God and damn. same thing for Kane, you Man. know what I mean. Uh, to, he's, to him, I'm his father, as far as mm. you know, you lyrically might be, in this game. You might yeah, I might. <laughs> <laughs> you were active, but <laughs> in those shoes, I, I, I got a different eye when it comes to you know, and I don't, I don't say judging, but as far as my opinion on on artists, I got a, a different eye than most people. You know what I mean. If you was a master fucking lyricist, okay, and show person, and and co-creator of hip hop, mm. then you could have my wow. same vision. Mm. You know what I mean? And if not, shut then, the fuck up. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck pretty up. Much. So, so you went with Kane. Yeah, I went with Kane. I went with Kane because, okay. I mean, as. If you put two niggas on the mic, one's against each other, psh, Kane, I, the shit that Kane we, we got. See they the verses. Verses, we, we they see the verses. We want to see the verses. They'd have to do it live. They'd have yeah. to do it live. Do it live. Yeah. yeah, they would have to do it live. Okay. And uh, so, Kane got some shit that people ain't even heard that will just. So let, let's, let's go to the next one. Kumo D or Cool G Rap? Mm. I would have to give the edge to Cool G Rap, though I am the DJ for Kumo D. You know what um, I mean? And uh, me, Kumo D myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, for facts. Kumo D myself and Melly Mel is considered the the, the first holy trinity of fucking MCs. God damn it. You know what I mean? The yeah. first holy trinity of MCs. Mm -hmm. And um, but commercially, if you broke broken it, stop, nigga. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's whip a whip. You know? Okay, okay, god damn it. Just throw them on, god damn it. Tell him to take a shot. Where are we at? Yo, Whip. Yeah, baby. Yo, say what's up. I'm on Drink Champs. Yeah! <laughs> hey, he like, what the he fuck like, is going on? He like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm on Drink Champs, yo. With Nori and everybody, yo. Yeah. yeah. Kaz would mute his phone, but he's 61 years old. I'm just you Hey, man, we don't mind. We don't mind. He's Grandmaster Bell, actually. So you went with Cool G Rap. Yeah, yeah, I went with Cool G Rap. Cool G Rap. I go I go G Rap as well. Yeah, G Rap is All right. Slick Rick or Dougie Fresh? Slick Rick. Again, I got to go with... The live? The live aspect, Dougie. Are we talking lyrically? Are we talking lyrically? It's whatever, whatever, you whatever it is for it's you. Whatever you want it to be. We're trying to get whatever you to take a shot. It. It's really what we're trying to do. <laughs> 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 because these questions are supposed to be tough. You, you, you're yeah, not. nobody got a show like Dougie Fresh. Nobody Excuse me, Dougie, Dougie Fresh. Fresh yes. Yeah, but Dougie yeah, hosting man. a show, well, it, will, it will fucking make your party go yeah. through the roof. No, okay, yeah. Fat Five Freddy or Ed Lover? Who's hosting your party? You got one person to host your shit. I think I I, I give Ed Lover the edge. Mm. I give Ed Lover the edge. Mm. 
I mean, what era is what I'm talking about now? See what You're I mean? You're making like, this shit way too complicated. I do, I do. <laughs> I overthink is what my yeah, problem is. Like, who got a better live show? <laughs> I mean... I mean, Fab Five Freddy's more... Um, he got more white bitches. We established that. Yeah, no, but he's also... <laughs> okay. He's also a little more friendly to the people. And Lover's not friendly? And, and Lover's cool with me, but I'm just saying... You seen I, him be a dickhead to somebody? No, I ain't seen him be a dickhead, but... You seen I just him feel not like, sign an autograph or t- not take a picture. Let's just throw it I out I remember there. one time 25 years ago... <laughs> 25 years ago. <laughs> he wanted the limo to himself, is all I'm saying. Oh, he kicked you out? No, he just wouldn't let nobody in. It means you... Let's make some noise for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I love Ed Lover. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> okay. MTV Raps or Rap City? Uh, or Rap City, yeah. Wow. Yo, MTV Raps. Yeah. MTV Raps. Yo, yeah. MTV yeah. Raps. Yeah, yeah I got to give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, facts. Um, okay, Big L, Big L. Big L. Mm. I'm a I'm a diehard Biggie fan, and I love Big L. He's like right there with it. So. Right. Okay. Red Alert or Boosie B? Red Alert. Red Uncle Red. Okay. I don't know why they got this here, but Wild Style or B Street? Boosie B, my dude, though. That's my dude. He came up right under me, man. But Red, if I was gonna hire somebody and I could only hire one person. That'd be Red Alert. Red Alert. Um, Wild Style of B Street, you already know. Oh, no, no, I, yeah. I wasn't in B Street. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wild Style all day. And, and Wild Style was the first and what? most authentic right, of, all, uh, of all of those movies. So the first time I saw Wild Style, I thought it was a documentary. That's what we said. That's what we yeah. just said, yeah, yeah. And you know, that version of Wild Style that you have right there. It's the bootleg. Is the, it's not the bootleg. <laughs> it's the reissue. No, it's, it's the reissue. It's the no, reissue. No, no, no. But oh, you know what's the original out here? No, but you he know. Out here was bro, I wasn't around. Yeah. I was a kid when it first came. I'll tell you, you what's, I'll tell you what's different on that one <laughs> is when there's a scene where Grandmaster Flash is cutting up live. On the original, he's cutting up Mardi Gras. And right. on this, they couldn't clear it. They couldn't clear it. So they put in the audio for something else. Well, yep. I don't even fucking know what it is. They put another uh, another beat in there. Oh, yeah. wow. That's how much of a nerd I am for this shit. Okay. Facts. And this is, what, 1982? That, that's when the movie came out, but that's not when that right, issue right, came right, out. Right, 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 right. The one that came out for that was like a yellow copy. Was just, it was mad cheap looking. I got it at Kmart in 84. Mm. Okay. LL or I'll be sure? What? <laughs> no, he thought of this. He was thinking. All right, you playing now? You, no, I mean, you never know, man. I'll be sure it's dropping some shit. I was just battle with the light skin niggas. Yeah, man. I'm doing light skin battle. <laughs> I got to give it to hell. Man. Okay. Yeah, I mean, listen. I remember with my only compliment that I ever got when I was like in the early '90s was a girl Someone said I looked like Al B. Sure, because I had a you. unibrow. <laughs> 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 But I always wanted to be LL. You know I mean? yeah, let's pick up that girl. She G Lottie like a motherfucker. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Oh shit. That nigga oh. look like Al ain't sure. Mm. <laughs> I'll be late. <laughs> I'll be damned. <laughs> Guru or Law Finesse? Ooh. Mm. Ooh. I mean. You know your shot is right there, just in case, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got you ain't got to pick anything all the time. <laughs> you, 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 I'll answer before you just to make it easier for no, you. No, 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 <laughs> no. I don't need that. Lord Finesse. Wow. Okay. Lord Finesse is my brother. Okay. Like we we live together, so I mean, you know. Sounds a little crazy. Not like that. <laughs> okay. All right. Not like that. <laughs> Rest in peace, Google. Yeah. Rest in He's peace. He's digging Google. in the crate, not digging in my crotches. He's uh <laughs> <laughs> no, Ness is my man. I mean, 50 grand, so. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, even wifey I mean, loves, loves stop, Ness. You know stop, stop already. <laughs> Let me just say, <laughs> I got to get him on your show. Yeah, that's no what problem. I'm saying. That's the homie. That's the homie. So you're going law for Ness. I got to go law for Ness. And right, I love this, Guru. This one, I really want to dig to see what y'all going to say on this one. DJ Premier. Or large professor. DJ Premier. Yeah, that was very easy for you. Primo. Primo. I, and I love I love large professor, but Primo. Large Pro is like in that next conversation. Mm-hmm. Large Primo, Pro. That's why the name. That's why the name is Premier. He's yeah. Premier, nigga. He's Woo. like yeah. He, come Woo. on. Man. Large Pro was the next Marley. Mm. Woo. Pharrell or Kanye. 
<coughs> Creatively. Who says shot? <laughs> my man, my handy boy KB, some of my bitch. <laughs> come on, I'm with you. Where, where the whiskey at? I'm with you. Come on, let me get some whiskey. By the way, this is. You know what? I'm gonna take a All shot. Right, let's go. Hold on, wait for us. We got to take my first shot. Yeah, okay. take your there shot. God damn it. For my you handy taking, boys. You taking a shot? Any oh, detective? Shit. Thank you. Thank you. Take a shot, my Indian detective brother. Just go with, with it, whatever he wants. Fuck it. Yeah, right, solo. But I gotta ride solo. with this. I know solo. I'm riding with it. Solo. Yeah. Okay. Dolly. Fuck your bomb. That's the next. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Next time with the drink check. Two more Fuck drinks, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. Who gives a fuck about hip hop band? Swiss beats? Swiss beats or Timberland? I gotta go with Swizzy, although I love uh, the, the newness that uh, Tim brought to uh, production. Mm. You know what I mean? His sound was like unique, just mm, like right. Pharrell's was. Mm. But uh, I'm more <clears throat> tuned into Swizzies. Okay. I look at Swiss, Pharrell, and Tim as the same era. They all three came with three different sounds. Right. And you knew exactly who you were listening to each time. Damn, that was a. I was, backs, I was about huh? to get on you for your long breakdown, but that was actually great. Yeah. But it wasn't an answer. <laughs> and it, you didn't answer shit, though. <laughs> but it was not an answer. It was fucking phenomenal breakdown. And, and it's elected. <laughs> <laughs> I will kiss all three of their babies. So which one you going with, Varela? I'm, I'm going to go with I mean, I'm I'm Swiss. I'm going to go with Swiss. Okay. Okay. I didn't even expect that. The Knicks or the Nets? This is more of a New Yorker question, because I know you were the Raptors. <laughs> Nick fan. I'm a Nick fan from, you, you one of from us? when Willis Reed, when, when Willis Reed limped out on the motherfucking court, nigga. I was standing there like this. Oh shit, Willis is coming out. I, I was watching that shit. Cassie Russell used to live next door to me. I, when I was 10. And then they used to come out, go jump in the cab, go to the guard. I'd be like, all right, Cassie. They say, all right, man, little dude. I mean, woo woo. And I'd be, sometimes I lie and tell people I name myself Cass because of Cassie Russell. <laughs> right now you have Cassie Russell right here. <laughs> what? <laughs> Cassie Russell. Oh, look at that. That's wow. That's crazy. That's wow. Crazy. Right, it so, ain't no accident, baby. No, that's yeah. what I'm saying. All right. Okay, so. I didn't like this one, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Fat boys or the Beastie Boys? Fat boys. Seriously, I would have to say musically and everything, I would have to give it to the Beastie Boys. Whoa! Yeah. You know what I mean? Look at it like. Whoa. I mean the Beastie Boys. I mean, come on, these niggas made classic albums. Yeah. The production. Behind their, their their music, the themes, and all that. One I think the Fat records. Boys was more of a novelty act mm. that it caught on. It was like, okay, right. shit, let's sign them up and you know put out a record. Mm. Um, I think the people's longevity kind of play out as far as what they originally were in this thing in the first place. Mm. Um, to me. If you are this, mm. if you claim to be this, mm. then you are always that. Mm. If you are at a certain level or whatever, this and that, then that's your motherfucking level. Don't you ever come here later on and tell me, nah, I can't do that no more. What the mm. fuck? If you was ever great, you always going to be great. Right. Mm. You always going to be great. So if you're not great right now, motherfucker, you wasn't great before. <laughs> he wasn't great people. in the first place. He just was saying that shit. <laughs> now, how many people today? I'm 61 years old. God how many niggas could fuck with me? <laughs> how many people could fuck with me on the mic right now mm. at 61? And I'm not just talking about my age. I'm talking about period. Mm. Right. That's not. That's not me bragging. That's the fact that I love this shit. God damn it. I breathe this shit. It's on your blood, yeah. I am this shit. God damn it. Make some noise for that, God damn it. <laughs> Hold on. We're going to get through this real fast, because I got, I got to ask you more questions. Okay. Latifah or MC Light? I would have to give it damn, damn, 
damn, all the way around. Whatever you want. Uh, Latifah. I go light. I like that y'all disagreeing now. Because mm-hmm. at first I thought she was just agreeing with it. Nah, nah, I like, nah. I like light. Uh, okay. The one. Ice Cube or Scarface? Ooh. You can take a shot. I, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, we got our shots ready. Yeah, I got, I got my shit ready. That's, too. A, that's, a, <laughs> difficult, that's a difficult one right now. Nah, I go with Cube. I go with Q. I'm friends with Brad Jordan, but I uh, I love Q. I love Q. that y'all call him Brad. I ain't calling him Brad ever in my life. <laughs> Listen, Victor, He's this gonna, is what we do. I don't like first names. And we're not calling L.L. Todd. I'm not calling L.L. Todd. I'm, I'm, I'm not, never doing that. I do call him Todd, actually. Yeah, I don't call him. Uh, Me and Curtis call him Todd. I'm, I'm taking a, a shot. Take a shot, God damn it. Grab out the cat. Yeah, come on, take a shot. Hey, no, no, that's not a shot. That's a drink. Take right. a shot, I, gotta, I need that whiskey. Take okay, that yeah, drink yeah, as yeah, a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it. Take. Ooh, sorry. So did, did Kim we, or Fox? No, we didn't answer that one yet. What? We took a shot. Oh, he took a shot for you. Oh, I, 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 I took the shot. Kim or Foxy Brown? That, that one was harsh on me. Damn. Yo, I got to go with Fox. Fox is... That's my girl, yo. Really? Oh, I, always, I, know. I, I, I was at a thing for her. Uh-huh. I was at a thing, a personal thing. And as far as us spitting bars is concerned... I'm trying to get her to come out the pulled, house. When she first pulled that shit off with Jay, what? nigga, what? I ain't which, heard which nobody... Ain't being, no nigga like that one? Uh, yeah, yeah. I ain't never seen her that. nobody pull no shit off like that since. Uh, right. you know I got I mean? to go with Kim, because wifey loves Kim. Like... You know Fox your wife is not being interviewed right no, now. No, no, but I'm saying, <laughs> you know, since that's all I hear in the house is Kim, oh, okay. I'm going to go with Kim. All right, cool. I respect that. You got to go home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this is a good one, actually. N.W.A. or Wu Tang? I gotta go Wu. Yeah. I go Wu. I go. I gotta go Wu. Outcast or Mob Deep? For me, that's easy. Creatively, Outcast. Mob Deep all day for me. It's the M O B B. They're from your they're from your part come of town. On, come on, come on, come on. Of course they I are. I can't quote lyrics for shit. Okay, all right, cool. All right. I got you stuck off. The and this is this is this is this is the last one. She heard of us. Official Queens Ridge, heard of us. Kick a pre. Hold on, he's been he's been mobbing lyrics. Our family. Now shots to see it all those who want to profile and pose. Rock you in your face, stab your, your brain with your nose bone. You all alone in the streets, cousin. In this, this land, in the self of this land, we've begun it. They keep the shit crews running like they supposed to. They come around, but they never come close to. And you can see it inside your face. You in the wrong place. Cowards like me, you get your whole body laced up with bullet holes and such. Come on! This is the last one. This is the last one. Transcend eras. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Let's get it. Kick a pre or Funk Master Flex? Uh, That's easy. That's easy? Yeah, for me, it's Kick a pre. I got to go Kick a pre. Kick a pre come from me. Mm. That's my hood. That's my. We call him Pooch. Wow. Okay, Pooch. We call him Pooch. We gonna, we gonna call him Pooch next time he comes <laughs> up. Call yeah. him Pooch. I call him Dave. <laughs> you go, you, who are you going to? I, call, I go with Kick Dave. It all day. Okay. Yeah, but, Dave. But, but I, we're not fronting on Frontmaster Flex, are we? I'm fronting on Frontmaster Flex. No, no. Well, you giving me a choice between okay, two right. motherfuckers I fuck with all day okay, long. Okay, all right. Cool, you know cool, I mean? cool. But I'm, let me just I'm say doing you what you want to do. Kick a Pre's my brother. But I still don't see people with the same passion as Funkmaster Flex. Like... Mm-mm. Um, Kick Capri still fun. Yeah, Kick Capri still for what? passionate. Like what I mean, what I mean, it was like a time where the music just shifted, right? It shifted to get into this new generation, and I've really seen Funkmaster Flex study the new generation just, just for him to transition. And to me, that's like you know, there's a lot of DJs that they did when it, when it stopped being vinyl, they wouldn't go to CDs. When it stopped being CDs, they. They, like it's, it's a lot of people that don't. We got why, my, why, why, th- yeah, why, yeah, definitely. You talking shit my about my friend me, right bro. here? Like this, this. At the vinyl, he, he likes carrying crates. No, I don't like carrying crates. In my mind, he likes carrying crates. Nobody likes carrying crates. But you're a purist. He's a purist. He's a purist. He's a purist. But I brought yeah. all my records to the party. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, my, my my point of that is not not to say King Reed didn't, but what I'm saying is I've never seen someone so focused like to. To not only be a legend here, but then to learn the craft of the new way, and, I, and I've never seen nobody like that. 
Capri think, does it too. I think because commercially, that was his job to right, do that. Right, it's different right. jobs. If you want to survive right. on radio, right. if you want to stay where you are up on radio, you got to know who's new. You got to know what's That's going real. on. You got to, right. you, you know, chummy up and, and, and round up and, and, and just get with that next generation because that's, that's where you're going to be. That's where you hopefully you're going to be. Mm -hmm. And if you establish a relationship with them, <clears throat> you always going to be in. They can't, right. You ain't old school. You ain't old head. Mm. Or whatever. That's like the fucking dreaded, you mm. know what I mean, moniker right. of our generate old head. You know what I mean? Yeah. Old head and old school is different. Right. For yeah. sure. And OG too. Well, I'm OG as well. Everybody that's that's what I meant that to say. Shit. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, when they say OG, they just they be trying to say you just old sometimes. What yeah. OG? Not I'm always. Like, nah. Not sometimes it's respectful. Nah, I be telling niggas, shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy older than me call me Big Bro. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, older what than fucking you? family is this? <laughs> But you have someone older than you call you Big Bro? Yeah, hey, Big Bro. Oh, yeah. Wait, how does that happen? You're more knowledgeable than that. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> What's the new slang, baby? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't like being called OG at all. Big homie, I don't like none of that shit. Yeah, I mean, I don't give a fuck. I got a white beard. Mean, I'll take man. it off. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Listen, man, I've been, I, I checked out your uh, movie. Oh, yeah, coming home, that yeah. You're yeah. working on that. Yo, applaud, yo. Which one? Which one did you or see? Where it goes because, to Cuba. Yeah. Yeah, well, you yeah to we Cuba. released it with, with Rock the Bells right now. We're re-releasing them. Oh, yeah? Because yeah? I'll be thinking he's not coming home sometime. I don't, yo. Like, I'll be, <laughs> that has more to do with immigration. What the fuck is you doing? What the fuck is you doing? But, but, this shit is fucking amazing. Thank you. Right, what I right, saw. Right, you know right. what I mean? Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate God damn. God damn. That's some real shit. For real. And speaking of Rock the Bells, I'm about to join the Rock the Bells family. Well, I already have. DJ? Um, uh, me and Sha Rock got a show. Woo! On the show. Say 45? No, 43. Rock the Bells Radio. Oh, 43. Is, is it on yeah, oh, yeah, Sha Bells Radio? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm going to say. Um, and um, I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of pumped about that. Yeah, that's you know dope. I mean? yeah. It's, Shout it's, to LL, man, for yeah. creating that platform. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You know what I mean? LL is a, uh, is a visionary, and uh, mm. I think he... Once he saw the platform that he could create mm -hmm. yeah. in, a, in the lane that nobody really is really that. addressing right now, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, the pioneers, the legends, you know, of the mm -hmm. game and stuff. And, you know, and I appreciate y'all. Like, like I said, it's like when you see artists of the magnitude of a, mm -hmm. um, ecstasy um, uh, mm -hmm. from who God bless. Rest in peace. Yeah, you know I mean, and... Uh, just re more recently, Biz Marquis. Rest in peace, Rest in peace. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, producer Chuck Thompson, and, uh, you know, Fred the Godson. Yeah, Prince Marky D. Yeah. And then Prince, yeah, Marky D. And, you know, the list goes Did on. You it's like you, you definitely start to appreciate who's left. Right. You know, if you got right. anything in you, know, in you and then something that you ever desired to do before, which I think... Mm -hmm. You know, you guys have had this in your mind and in your hearts for a long oh, time mm -hmm. before this ever happened. Mm -hmm. You know, you had it in your head that, yo, niggas, we need to give these niggas some kind of recognition. Man. Yeah, yeah. These niggas some kind of, and, and, and it's contagious. Right. I mean, like you said, I mean, you didn't create the term, but right. not you. We made it it's famous, like Michael yeah. didn't create the fucking moonwalk, right? Right, right. but right. he got everybody in the fucking world doing wow. it. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. So, Same thing with Legs. He didn't start Rocksteady Crew, but he's the face of it. Yep. Wow. That's what's up. Well, you know, for us, man, you know, um, you know, uh, like I said, I, I, we met each other. You know, he was a, a, a mixtape DJ and a rep for, for the label. So I used to come out here all the time. And... Me and him, me just seeing like his pure hip hop shit. Like he don't, he just want to spend on vinyl. And I've been trying to tell him, Yo, man, get Serato or something. I don't even think he got Serato, man. No, I got, I got <laughs> tractor. Right, right. In my tractor. mind, he ain't got Serato, bro. Who the fuck uses tractor with a farmer? Ain't nobody uses tractor. Tractor effing. scratch, man. Yeah, it, Come on, tractor. Native, oh, it's not. Native Instruments is dope. Come so, on, so, they Just because they sponsor you don't mean you got a big one. They just sponsor me when I got my original. So I like to put, I, I really, like to, to, to tell you the truth, our show is about interviewing legends, right? And I'm gonna be honest with you. You're a real, real, real first legend, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. no, no yeah. disrespect to anybody that's ever been on this show, but when you look at your history and like you said, you, uh, you are the co-creator. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, there's nothing that can take away from that. And I just want to tell you that to your face, how much we respect you, yeah. how much we love you, how much we fuck with you, and how much we appreciate it. Because, like I said, um, we've been doing this almost six years. 
this is the funnest research I've ever done. Because like I said, I just every time I was looking at something, I was learning something. And this is the reason why I wanted to tell these new artists that, you know, you know, you these new artists will reference a Michael Jordan. They'd be like, like Jordan in 86. Like, nigga, you wasn't even born in Jordan in 86. Why you don't know about Grandmaster Cass? Why you don't know about Grand Wizard Theodore? Why you don't know about, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And, and it's like, if you can do that with basketball, you don't get paid off of basketball, you little dirk. You get paid from MC and you get paid from. So wouldn't it be dope to go learn your own fucking craft? Well, the, the problem is the tree was there when they came. Right. They, don't, they didn't care where the fucking roots were planted. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to know about the seed. They just wanted to know about the new leaves but, that were coming. But they out. wore the Michael Jordans. They wore it. And, yeah. then, and then they think they wanted to know why the sixes were sixes. And they wanted to know why the sevens were sevens. And why were they so, so famous? <laughs> why you can't do that with hip hop? Why you can't go back there and realize that there was people that came before you? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a deep, I'm, I'm one of them. I need to know about everything. If I like something, I want to know from. From the beginning to now. Right, yeah. I, I'm like that. I, like that. I love doing research now. Yeah, everything. When we first started this, I didn't do nothing. But now I'm like, yeah, fuck it. This shit is like actually good. I know how to Google now. I didn't know how to Google before. <laughs> that shit is in, <laughs> it's knowledge. That's input. Yeah. Right? That's input. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So let me ask you. Do you, do you feel appreciated? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. From... From the community mm -hmm. of, of hip hop, mm -hmm. I feel appreciated. Right. Um, the friendships that I made mm -hmm. because of hip hop and mm -hmm. because of people's appreciation mm -hmm. for, for for me in, in hip hop are the things that you know you know I value, and um, th those are the things that keep me involved and keep mm -hmm. me going, mm -hmm. and not just as a, a, a participant, as a, a artist himself, because right now, you know, I ain't running around still trying to get a record deal and no right. shit like that, you right. know what I mean? I pick and choose right. what I want to do. And hopefully, I built up a resume large enough for me to not have to prove nothing to anybody. You right. just look it up like, like right. you did, be right. like, oh, okay. That's right. that nigga. Right. Let's, yes. Let's bring him on the show. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. No, <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But yeah, I, I definitely feel appreciated. I've mm -hmm. made associate with people like this brother, and he's right. connected me and you know, with so many things and so many people. Because that's what he does. He's like mm -hmm. a fucking networker. Right. Um, who, you know. <laughs> No, really, really, I'm really. Taking one, a shot for that. Can you pass me that? One, one I'm taking a shot for that, man. One I'm, person go. You, you, you go that was through Russell. Thing, it's right there. Network. One person go through Russell, <laughs> and, and on the other side, it's like this bunch of like that, like some shit over there. Yeah. You, know? and like, you got two uh, Ricos over way, there. You come right. out there. He knows everybody over there. And he lives with yeah, Law Finesse. Yes. <laughs> no, Law Finesse lives with him. Yeah. Okay. okay. He's downstairs. I'm upstairs. In all fairness. Wait a minute. I mean, in the same room. Same house. Same house. Knock it off. Come take our own. We need Lord Finesse out here, by the way. Lord Finesse would love to do this show. Yeah, we need Lord Finesse out here. Lord Finesse produced on my first album, The War Report. Yes, yes, he did. I did not know that. The War Report, yes, he did. Now, I gotta ask you. Do you remember a young Fat Joe? Yeah. Fat Joe grew up in the neighborhood that I grew up in, but... You know, years later. Okay. Um, my first knowledge of Fat Joe, he had a, a crew called Full Eclipse. Wow. Okay. Wow. And one of the members of Full Eclipse was family to one of my son's mother. Mm. So... I mean, this shit is crazy, man. Yeah. Any question you ask me, I can connect to myself somewhere. Right. No problem. And I did, I'm not trying to do this shit no, on you purpose. No, you good. You good. Do I'm it on purpose, saying. nigga. You deserve your flowers. We gave them to you, too. I'm Look, just saying. Open up that case. Look at that case. That's, that's real flowers. Real flowers. That's real flowers, yeah, last bro. last five years. Yeah, gold. yeah. That in, shit in, is in, in my mind, that's gold. All right? Just... just but 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 that's how that's how I first uh, uh -huh. found out about Fat Joe. You know they uh -huh. told me you know what I mean. This and that, this and that. My nephew is down with you know this guy Fat Joe and such and such. And I'm like mm -hmm. okay. And then you know the songs I would you know start coming out. This and that. Other people KRS start mm -hmm. talking about them. So of course you rep the Bronx. I know about you. Right. I'm, I'm somewhere near close or watching. You know what I mean. So 
I, I've been in about three of Joe's videos. Okay. Probably didn't notice what I was doing mm. yet. So let me let me ask you, and, and this is probably a generic <laughs> question: Is Curtis Blow named Curtis Blow because he was doing Curtis Blow? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a legit question, though. Well, I mean, that's, there's a reason why Superhead is Superhead. Uh, <laughs> maybe she was a superhero, bro. Um, that's not for me to, to <laughs> say. I mean, it's the rumors. Come on, now, man. That's... I even got round. I got you know. I, I fuck with music when I'm DJing, and I like to make references to like yo, you know. Curtis B. Smith and blow. And, you know, and, and you play you know, white. Yeah, it's nice. you know I mean? But no, I mean no. Because I don't think I don't think that's why his name is Curtis Blow. And we need Curtis Blow to answer that for himself. Let's be clear, back in the days, Coke was considered like y'all. That was like Oh definitely. That was, that was like was, Madonna Coke, type Coke, shit. Coke started, you know, becoming, you know, available to like to hip hop. Like you been to Studio fifty four? Yeah. Yeah. How was it? I never finger popped nothing. She was me. wild. She was uh, wild, yeah. Did she you finger pop something in the Studio 54? Did I or would I? Did you? Both. Did I? <laughs> no. But would you? I went up in a... <laughs> you would got you, that right. You? <laughs> we all would if we could. <laughs> would it should have fit I'm a tunnel, baby. I ain't making it to Studio 54. I went up in a few people in the limelight, though. <laughs> i tell you that, guy. Oh, you know the limelight is open right now. It's Jew Long Club. Get the fuck out of yeah, here. It's, it's, the it's, church. The church. Yeah, that's, the, oh, that's that's that that's restaurant real? is Jew. That's Jew. I did that's not know that. Yo, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. By the way, New York City, we the foulest um, city in the world. We made a club, a church. Um, I a mean, church, the church, a church, a church, a church, a club. Exactly. We know. How, how, how have we ignored that for twenty five years? And, and, and no one thought, like, yo, this is yo, this the is kind of club place. it was. <laughs> Y'all did not ignore it. Y'all knew you were walking into a church. No, I ignored it. I act like I didn't know where I was at. He became ignoring. He's like, I'm about to, I'm about to get first communion in this motherfucker. Yo, you had to walk past a lot of things that was like, that you don't do. Right? What? In that motherfucker right. there, well. Do you think, and, and this is a generic question, but it, at one point, in order to be an artist, you had to perform in New York City, these Latin quarters, the Copacabanas, all of this. Oh, yeah. It, there was like a, uh, what do you call that? The, chick, the Chitlin Circuit. Chitlin Circuit. And wait, there, wait, wait. there was a Chitlin Circuit in, in New York? York? In hip hop, yeah, was that it? you had to go to. I thought that was when we went down south. Nah, but I, I, I'm making reference to that, but it was the okay. same kind of mentality. It was like, all right, you got to play here. Now you got to play. You want right. this exposure up here, uptown. You got to go play here. Mm -hmm. All right, you want them to know you down and over and such, such. You got to play here. And then you do that until the demand picks up for you. Now, now people call you to where they yeah, want they you. Want they you want back. you to come back to over here, or they right. want you to go back to over here. Mm. You know I mean, we was one of the first cats that just start going outside of the city limits. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, Bronx, Westchester, uh, right. Connecticut, Jersey. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We had parties in, in each town. Every time, everybody who had a skating rink, we was in that mm. motherfucker performing. Bridgeport, Connecticut, New Haven, Connecticut, Danbury, Connecticut. Or, I mean, I got fucking arrested in Chicopee, Massachusetts. It's fire. Doesn't sound for like having a fun spikes place. on. <laughs> having spikes on. You know, you know, we used to wear that fucking spikes. You know, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, used yeah, to wear them too. Yeah. Louboutin, <laughs> Louboutin, owe y'all money though. Because Louboutin took y'all spike shit mm -hmm. and made it hip hop again, but then they put it on shoes. Well, my like, I, I, I said, you like those shoes? No, one of my favorite lines is one of yours. Oh, what? Louboutin sneakers with the spikes. That's for weirdos. That's for weirdos. I'm, I'm a hood. hood. I don't I'm wear those. <laughs> That's my shit right yeah, there. Yeah, thank you for knowing that. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah, damn, damn. Yo, Russell, so you just you just a rich nigga with just running around with cigars. This is just how you. I had him. I had it brought in. You know. What is that? What kind of cigar is that? It's a uh, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, I love Romeo and Juliet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is. This, this, this is a hoodie and a fouliet. Yeah. <laughs> they rolled from the same people. I right. flew him in from Peru. <laughs> He's a Peruvian wrestler, and oh, he rolls word. weed on the side. You know what I mean? King. <laughs> God damn! All right, what a job! What a job! Like what a, a job! Like, like LL said, the Peruvian prince, the king of quaaludes. Okay. I didn't catch that line mm -hmm. back in the days. Now it makes sense. There you go. Now it makes so. I yo ask because. This is this is really truly an honor, man. When I really like like did like I said, I did the research and I'm seeing it. And I'm seeing these parties. Like hip hop gotta seem 
Hey, 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 hey. I, I, don't, I, I, I actually don't know how to articulate this. But what I'm saying is, oh, what kind of, you got a, you, you're a rich nigga too? What, what kind of cigar is that? That's, that should look it's expensive. It's from Puerto Rico. Yeah, that, yeah. It's from Puerto Rico? What? Yeah. The, the Puerto country Rico? or the guy? You, you make cigars? Let me see. Yeah, this look nice. Okay, okay. You smoke? All right, yeah, I smoke cigars, but I, I like to smoke in the marijuana though. Uh, <laughs> that look like the Cristal of uh, cigars. <laughs> yes, yes. So, hip hop. I asked you, did you ever think hip hop would make it this far? And you said no. I didn't. I didn't. And like I said, if yeah. I would, I, I would have invested in it. Right. You know? Right. The people who couldn't do what we did, mm -hmm. did what we couldn't do. Say that one more time. I'm going to say it one more time. The people who couldn't do what we did, did what we couldn't do. And, um, Russell Fire. Simmons can't rap, can't break dance. That's a great transition. Can't DJ. You know what I mean? He, can so do when you started yoga. he can't do graf graffiti. So what was your but, first impression? But he did go to college and he did get a degree yeah. and he did, he understands the business mm. of business. Business. Yeah. And so he took that and uh you know, the rest is history. So. Who was your first impression like when you see Russell come around? Because there, other than um, what we spoke about earlier, the Sugar Hill Gang, I think you said her name was Sylvia? Sylvia Robinson. Sylvia Robinson. Other than that, there wasn't a lot of black ex executives. I would imagine that Sugar Hill Gang was probably the first ones. Well, I mean, the, the, the label. Sugar Hill Records. Sugar Hill Sugar Records. Records. Oh, yeah. Because they were independent labels. Right. Okay, you got to understand. Um, Major labels would not fuck with hip hop in the early days. Wow. They didn't believe in it. They didn't think it would last. They thought it was just a fad or a trend or whatever, and they didn't want to invest in it. Curtis Blow was the first hip hop artist Christmas to get rap? signed to a major label. And he had Christmas rap. Christmas rap and that. Yeah, Christmas that, rap and Did that the come breaks, up before or the breaks? Later on. So let me ask y'all. Let me ask y'all. Let me ask you definitely, particularly. Wasn't that kind of commercial to make a rap about Christmas? You goddamn right. Okay. But guess what? <laughs> All right, cool. Guess what? Every year, yeah. stuff after yeah. Thanksgiving, yes. <laughs> that record plays from that day on motherfucking all the way to Christmas. <laughs> to this day. To New Year. To this day. Over and over right. and over. So you tell me. <laughs> right. Right. No, we love you, Curtis Blow. God damn. That's kind of smart. You know what I mean? That was fucking smart. <laughs> mm hmm and um, that was one of the advantages that having a major label behind you. You got a team. You got right. people who know the music business behind you. Mm -hmm. They're going to hire the people that you need. They're going to hire a fucking band. They're going to hire producers. They're going to hire, if you need this, they're going to bring that in. They're going to all that. Mm -hmm. So you got all that. How the fuck can you miss? All right, real talk. As opposed to somebody who's doing something independently, even though they're doing better work, the independent artists are doing, I mean, come on, Bobby. The shit that the uh, Enjoy Records that they did, Pumpkin and All Stars, their band that they did on Enjoy, is fucking incredible. I love Pumpkin and All And at some point, that shit is gonna be, I mean, it's it's legendary. Right. It's legendary. Pumpkin the Sugar Hill Band. The Sugar Hill Band. The, the shit that they your, did for Sugar Hill Records. The dude stole your record? Yeah, yeah. The, not the Sugar Hill Gang. The, the band the that band. played with the gang that stole my record. Yeah. <laughs> and then Duke Booty. Yeah, Duke Booty, who really? wrote the message. <laughs> not, not that Duke Booty that you... <laughs> not, a, not, a, not a Dookie Booty. <laughs> wait up, wait up. You just hit me with two bombs. Wait up. First off, you named it a dude named Duke Booty. That's one. <laughs> But then you said, he wrote the message. Dude, Woody wrote, oh, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my They didn't emotions. write their wrong? Wait, wait, no, wait, 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 look. wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, you, you're going too far right now. I'm here to school you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> not trying to fool you. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The two cameramen just got happy because you're singing reggae. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly, guacamole. I don't know where you're going with this camera. Put the light right there. Come on. Duke Booty. Duke um, Booty. By the way, uh, we just got to say Paul every time we say Rest in peace. Rest, rest in peace. peace. Okay, yeah, let's rest in peace, Duke Booty. Okay. <laughs> Was a member He's of the Sugar Hill band, and he wrote um, 
the message. And Sylvia Robinson wanted the Sugar Hill Gang to do it, but they didn't want to do it. The shit was too slow. Matter of fact, nobody wanted to do it. And so Duke Booty did it, and they put Melly Mel on it to do the rhyme that he did. Broken Glass. Everywhere. Wait, so he, he wrote Melly's part? No, no, Broken oh. Glass. Everywhere. That ain't Melly. Melly Mel, Duke Booty wrote that. Wait, but the whole song. So, but did Mel write anything? Don't push me. That's right. Cause I, Duke Booty wrote that. Oh, shit. Come on. Fucking me up now. Duke Fuck, Booty made most of the music for Grandmaster Flash and Furious Five. His name was Ed Fletcher. May he rest in oh, peace. Oh, yes. Yes, I heard that name. That's Duke Booty. And you know. Now, uh, what Melly Mel. I'm sorry. I was going to say, Davey D did the music for If I Ruled the World. All right, that's a whole nother. That's sorry, I was just going yeah, in. Yeah, you just went on a whole yeah. different, uh, that, that was the yeah. Indian detective going. That was my so, detective brain. He wrote the whole So, thing. yeah, it was it was his idea and his song. And Sylvia wanted the Sugar Hill Gang to do it. They didn't want to do it. She wanted the Furious Five to do it. They didn't want to do it. So she got Mel to do it with Duke Booty. So Mel is reciting Duke Booty's, you know, broken glass everywhere. People pissing on. Mel wrote the last verse in the message. Mm, okay. Child is born with no state of mind, blind to the ways of mankind. That's Mel. Yeah. And, and that was taken from Super Rapping, from mm. his song with the Furious Five on Enjoy Records. Right. Damn. That record was two sides. So... A and B. It was Super Rapping Part One and Super <laughs> Rapping Part oh, Two. I was like, oh, this is a trick. One and two. Like twenty minutes each side, okay. just nonstop rapping. Yeah, it was. It was, it was super rapping. rapping. It was super rapping. Right. So I mean, you didn't know that, right? Ah, oh, no. Know. Yeah, know that. yeah. So and and like I said, rest in peace to Ed Fletcher and his family. You know what I mean? He just passed away uh, recently. So was that so, like the thing back then is to have somebody else write your lyrics? Because that's like... Never. Oh, so that was, that was nah. a soft law back that then? That was the, nah. what you're saying. That's probably like the record shit, the Listen, record label shit that was doing you, that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you got to understand that prior to the record industry being involved in hip-hop, there was certain ethics and shit, you know what I mean? There was like a code, you know... Uh, written or unwritten, you know what I mean? You don't bite people's shit, you know what I mean? You got ridiculed for that shit. Right. There was nothing written down that said that, but nigga, you don't do shit like that. Wow. That's how it was. So for somebody to say somebody else's shit, and then, I mean, in a big forum, and, and, and you know what I mean, like benefit from that shit, that shit was unheard of. Get the, you get ridiculed for that type shit. But the record industry don't have no fucking rules. Right. It don't have no morals. Uh -huh. And that was considered the first reality rap, like right? Like gangster rap shit. Like, like yeah. pretty much gangster rap pretty before much. School ED. Pretty much, yeah, the message is considered the first one that dealt with, you know, urban issues and the, the conditions that, that existed, right. mm -hmm. you know, in our neighborhoods and shit like that. It was, I mean, it, Fucking Grammy Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you mm. know what I mean? Mm. From that record alone, these guys, you mm. know, not just that, but them and the rest of the thing they've done, you know. But that being the pinnacle, that that message. But and, and y'all were cool back then, cause like it was like a little drama between the crews. We wasn't cool. No, no. no, no. <laughs> I like how you said, we wasn't cool. We wasn't, I love it. He meant they wasn't cool. You got to understand. I love it. You got to understand. Um, when Melly Mel and them, and, and when the Furious them. Five, I keep saying Melly Mel because that's my brother. Mm -hmm. But um, when the Furious Five got signed mm -hmm. to Sugar Hill, they left the streets. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, we was all in the streets. Mm -hmm. We was all vying for who's the best in the Bronx or who's the best in the New York or who, you know what I mean, doing these different you know, and once they got signed, they left. And then once they started going on tour, there was nobody left. So we were like scrambling to f to fill that void. Well, we the next niggas right. after them that's gonna take the throne of whoever's the best in New York. Right. You know what I mean, so that was the Fantastic Five and us. Mm -hmm. The Funky Four had got signed to Sugar Hill as well. So they was off with the Furious Five. So. And that was considered a Jersey label at the time. It was a Jersey label, but okay. it was the fact that they, were, that they were recording artists now. Wow, okay. And we still doing jams in Harlem World and shit like that. Harlem doing, World? Doing, doing, well, we doing shows, 
and getting paid, but mm. we still doing live performances. We now signed or on tour. Mm. Wow, this is amazing. This is, uh, this is, this is I'm, I'm, I'm just. Then you got Treacherous 3. Yes, I love with, how you change the subject. Let's go. With Kumo, <laughs> with, I'm just saying, just keep it moving. I'm well, saying. Yeah, well, well, then you got Kumo D Kumo and them got signed. Who'd they get signed to? They got signed to Sugar Hill because most, most of the acts that were first signed to. It, so it, it's Hill. crazy. It's like a migration from whatever group you're in now to the next group that's going to take you the way you want to go. Even from so back from my hopping? history. Yeah, it was group hopping. My first MCs, you know, when they left me, they went to DJ Charlie Chase. And when they left Charlie Chase and them, they went to the Fantastic, or they went to Kevy Kevin and them, and they became the Fantastic Five. You know what I mean? And, and it's the same with this shit right here. It's like, you, you know, you... you you know, group hopping to get to where the fuck you're trying to go. Right. And yeah. Sequence was on uh, Sugar Hill, and Sequence had Angie Stone in the group. Really? Yeah, Angie Stone was part of Sequence. You ain't know that? Nah. Mm-hmm. Angie Stone? Angie Stone, Angie Stone. Angie Stone, Angie Stone. Listen, what, what year is that? D'Angelo's baby mama, Angie Stone. What year is that? 1979. I'm going funk. You right on up, we gon' funk you right on up. She says a name in the song too. Right on up, we gon' funk you right on up. That's Angie Stone. Apparently older than we think. Get up, 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 but so guess she what? had to be something back guess in the what? days, at least. Guess what, though? We need Angie wrong? Stone on Drink Chance. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, we do. And D'Angelo. Not together. Angie Stone. We're together, maybe I remember that. Before D'Angelo, <laughs> Angie Stone married to little Rodney C from the Funky Four. Plus one I'm more. little Rodney C. Yep. Rodney Stone. Okay, that's it's getting, where it's Angie getting Stone. Funky Four that's plus a lot of people. <laughs> I, hey, listen. Y'all ain't got me up here for no fucking that's reason. Goddamn damn no shit. <laughs> And I ain't saying shit people don't already know, yeah, but like right. the pop, oh. it's Googleable. Large, people, yeah, it's Googleable. It's Googleable. It's Googleable. God, why do we need Google? We got the real fucking deal. Yeah, yeah, Google. Go. Shit, that's the, Google right here. Grandmaster Google. The Grandmaster Grand Google. Yo, so invent like, that. Yeah. So let me ask Google you, Master Cass. <laughs> let me ask you, right? If you could put the five, you know, everyone always asks the top five dead or alive. I'm not gonna ask you that. What Please, I'm gonna thank ask you, you is. If you could put the top five fathers and hip hop fathers, like how the FBI got, you know, FBI would do, <laughs> FBI would put right, most, right, wanted. most wanted. <laughs> yep, they'll put they'll put Gotti here, then they'll put Cap, El Capitan and Sig, Signieri and all that. If you could do yours, the top five hip hop fathers and godfathers, I would like to hear it. In order. Four. It don't have to be in order. No, no, it, it has to be if you're putting it in that way. That's not the man making choice. If you're saying choice. Godfather and Father, it's got to be in some kind of order. Okay, but you can't have the Godfather before the Father before the Father Godfather. Okay, the grandfather. it all, it all, it all, it all starts with cool earth. Has to, right? For me, and for everybody, that's where I come from. I'm from the west side of the Bronx. I lived up on the next block from cool earth, Sedgwick Avenue, failing place. Mm. Okay, so when I was young and impressionable and the block would clear out and go down the fucking block, all you know, the whole block would clear out, I'd be like, what the fuck is going on? But I'm, I'm you know, I'm 13, 15. Mm. Yo, we going to Cool Herc party, we going to Cool Herc party. So I wasn't able to go to Cool Herc party. Mm. But, you know what I mean, I'm like, this must be some shit. And then when he started playing outside, I got the opportunity to see him. And from that time, I, you know, I, I aspired to be a DJ like who hurt, you right. know what I mean? And everybody else, once they caught the the, the, the bug that we call hip hop now, um, were mainly inspired by by who hurt. You know what I mean? Everybody else popped up afterwards and popped up, you know, as a result of or, or, or seeing or being inspired by and like, yo, I wanna do that. So right. you know, 
uh, the blackout in 77. That's when you got your equipment. No, I have my equipment already, you but got, I, you upgraded. I got some, I upgraded. <laughs> yeah, you got some new things. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there the was big a sale. Mix that I came before, before, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, but hold on. Let's just stay focused. So we got Cool Herc as El Capitan. Cool Herc. He is as the godfather. He's the, the father. He is the father. Or the grandfather, to be even more correct. Not the father. Let's give him the father. He's the father. Yeah, now as you, as you go on, grandfather, but but originally father. The father. Right, okay, right. now who you got? This is I ain't talking about the world of hip hop. I'm talking about Grandmaster Cass. What was your name? Casanova Fly. Casanova Fly. The C A S and the O V A and the rest is F L Y. I still think you deserve royalties off of that. Yeah. Hey, listen, we're gonna fight for that shit. We need to figure that out. Holla at Leland, holla at Leland Robinson. Somebody, Lee, needs, she gonna hear about this. Let's, back back let's set up a meeting. A back page? Or back page? No back. Oh. Not back page. Like, no, 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 back page. No, no, you on no, a whole different level here. No, no, he's talking about reparations. Yes. No, 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 I need some reparations. Page, no, but he's talking about back page. That's some porno shit. That's some porno shit. That's what he said. No, I ain't say that shit. He said back page. No, you went to back page. My mind is fucked up. All right. You want to go and sleep with? Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> That's that Russell <laughs> shit right there, you okay, okay. All right, so number one, cool her. I need to hear two, three, four. Who five. stems from Herc then? No, no, no. I want, according to you, I don't give a fuck what is politically correct. I think what's you, what you, what your what you, perspective. What you, your perspective. Africa Bambada. Two. Right after Herc? Or one of? Like, there were a couple of people, but they didn't, like, last long enough in the landscape, you know what I mean? To make an impact, like... Yeah, to make the kind of impact, maybe to me, because I knew, but not to enough people, like, right. not enough people know the DJs that I, I would talk about, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I would have to say Flash um, was the next. So if there's, like, a, a Mount Rushmore of hip-hop DJs, then, of course, Cool Herc. Cool Herc. Bambada. Grandmaster Flash. Flash. Um, right. If we're talking about hip hop, period, people, um, I would have to add um, Melly Mel to that, and probably myself to the other side. God damn it! You know what I mean? That's the five, and um, that would be the five. If you want to add some, you can add some. You, you motherfucker. Oh, I mean, of course we can ask. I mean, come on, AJ, DJ AJ. I mean, AJ promoter. Pro, I wham. mean, pro, he was more of a promoter than he was a DJ. But the nigga wrote, "If I rule the world." Mm. I'm scared to ask. Why the fuck am I here? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Wait up. Okay, AJ wrote Curtis. Blow, AJ wrote, "If, if I, I rule, rule the world." The world. The we whole thing? Up. Yeah. You're so feeling a lot of shit right now. We are, we are out of control. And you hurt my childhood as well. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad thing. I'm just saying. They Ghost was, they writing was, has they been was happening down. for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. They, was, they was down with each other. And goes right. And once you become an artist, man, that, that hip-hop purist shit goes right out the fucking right. window. Right. It don't matter who hit. wrote it. Yeah. I don't give a fuck who invented it. Who idea it was. Who you stole it from, motherfucker. That shit sound good. You're going to record it. Let's put that shit down. Right. Okay. You know? So, oh, damn, shit. Wait, but hold up. In this Mount Rushmore that you created, that, we got the five. No, no, hold up, hold up, hold up. Where do you place? See, if you're talking about, it, you saying hip hop as a whole, I would have to include me and Melly Mel in because right. he, you know. First of all, you and Melly Mel would usually be cool. Y'all was going at it at first. I mean, as groups, so as we groups. Had ne never had no animosity. Oh, okay, all right, cool, cool. But you're just adding, and this is just me asking a question, you're just adding the, the, the music side. Where do the, the B-boys, the dancers, the graffiti well, artists see, come from? Well, if you limit, parcel. listen, if you limit... Are they a part of that Mount Rushmore? What are you thinking about? It's not my Mount Rushmore. Re relax, buddy. Hold on. It's not my Mount Rushmore. Hold on. If I you like his Mount Rushmore. We're not talking to you right now. I'm talking to him right now. closing it out with his Mount Rushmore. How many people is on Mount Rushmore right now? It's five, four. Four. But so, right. and, five we, we, accepted, and we stretching it by putting five. Yeah. So right. if you want to include the elements of right. hip hop and, mm -hmm. and every and every pioneer from that For era. For each element, right. It'd be too much. You mm -hmm. need more mounts, more mountains than Rushmore, my right. nigga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know I mean? Bars. So <laughs> Bars. you know what I mean? Each each element would need its own um mountain mm -hmm. range, or it would have to be a big enough mountain range to fit every 
you know, pioneer from that particular but, element. But your what account. I'm saying, as far as the DJs is concerned, it would be Cool Herc, Bambada, Grandmaster Flash. I would have to include um, uh, DJ Breakout because Breakout was one of the premier DJs back in the day, not for skill or nothing like that, but he had Uptown in the Bronx on lock. Right. And there's more Breakout Flyers then you can find pretty much a, a, a most motherfuckers flyers out there. And I'm talking about the original Brothers Disco, Funky right. Four, and then later the Funky Four plus one more with my sister Shah Rock that I will be on Rock the Bells Radio mm. with so, coming so let me, up soon. Okay. Let me, let me, let no, me but hold on. But I just want I just want to say because the only reason I was saying this is because even by your account you were saying the B Boys is what led everybody to downtown was leading that. That yeah, charge. the B boys, the B boys, along with like uh, Bambada, I think. See, Planet Rock had come out by '82, right? And Planet Rock was that merge between punk rock, that punk rock sound, and that and and, and, and hip hop. So it was like carte blanche down there. You know what I mean? That 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 fucking scene was crazy down there. And then Bam was one of the first cast to acquire a manager, Lady Blue, mm. and and Lady Blue was like the she was the, the the way in down there to the to that punk rock scene and to the rock scene and all that right. eventually. So you know, Planet you know, Rock came from tra Trans Europe Express. Exactly. Right, 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 right. right, right, right. right. Germany. Yep, yep. Right. So his impact is 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 indelible, indelible. You can't you can't not mention him. You right. know what I mean? Him, Grandmaster Flash, being hip hop's first turn tableist. Yep. Right. Okay. But prior to him, everybody was just playing records. Right. You know what I mean? He's the one, first one to start manipulating records, you know what I mean? Yeah, and changing absolutely. them, and, but being on beat with it. Theodore, you know, then... Kaz you know. told me a really dope story about when he was DJing, and he was supposed to battle somebody, and it ended up becoming Theodore, remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was supposed to battle Theodore, and he was like, wait, you DJ now? Because uh, he just knew him as Teddy from the block. Because the DJ was actually bigger than the MC back then, right? It was all about the DJ yeah, in the yeah. beginning Everything. of the hip hop. It was the DJ. It was the DJ and the, the B-Boys. The DJ was nigga getting pussy. Let's just keep it real. Yeah, but here's... But the MC was shouting out the drug dealers. So he was getting a little pussy. The MC was yeah, big but, enough to DJ. Yeah, but prior to the prior to that, yeah, the, the MC was big enough to DJ. And prior to that, the DJ was big enough his damn self. <laughs> um, me, that's how I became a, a dual, you know, dual role. I, I, I DJ and I MC. Um... My, my DJ would fuck up every time I would go to do something like crucial. Like, I wrote this rhyme that's this and this and that. And when I get to this point and when I say this, mm. boom, you bring in the record. And nine times out of ten, niggas would fuck me. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, fuck y'all. And I start DJing for myself. Wow. So that's why they start calling me the first simultaneous DJ MC. I'm not the first dude to DJ and MC, but I'm the first guy that documented mm. that could DJ and rap at the same time. Like, and I, DJ I'm at a high my level. Own record. You DJing yourself. I'm cutting like my own record. Set. You're right. Like, I, I, yeah. give me a break beat and I'm cut that shit up and I'm rap and I'm rhyming over it. Like, nah, that's nah, crazy. I'm and still gets up. busy to this day. So, wow. you put you put your um, the dead bottles in here. You found, bro. Yeah, what the fuck, bro? What you oh, you put, I'm just saying. I thought, thought I spilled your fucking shit. That's the reason why I'm glad there's nothing did. in Maybe there. You did. Maybe it has something in there. But now I realize it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you found, motherfucker. Holy moly, fucking moly, man. So um, we already promoted the Indian detective, which I told you I liked, right? Right. <laughs> what we need to promote is the uh, culturally canceled with Russell Peters. Culturally canceled. That's your podcast. That's my bro? podcast. Culturally One day when you're in LA, I'd like to have you on it. You know, you know, I got your back, bro. We'll I'll, do that I'll, Nobu if it makes I'll, you happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll make him happy. <laughs> yeah, it'll make me happy. I love Nobu. I like expensive shit. Let me ask you something. Yes, I'm in. Uh, uh, do you remember when Swiss Beats made the announcement that he wanted to give the old school pioneers a million dollars? Each. For, each. We going there? I mean. For, for, for like reparations. Tell them. Talk, 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 talk. You, did you hear about that? Yes, or? I did. What was, your, what was your take on that? I wanted my million dollars as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, nigga, you supposed to be one of the donors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm old school too. He's, he's, no, you said you already said he's fresh as a motherfucker, man. <laughs> you know, like, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, you know, um, to check. To tell you the truth, I'm going to be honest expensive. with you. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. This, that, Swiss actually got that idea from us. We actually was been, been promoting 
I forget what, who got sick. And we was like, this is terrible. The rap community. Is Jimmy to Spicer. Step up. Huh? Jimmy Spicer got sick. No, that's, it wasn't. It that's wasn't, when I, we started talking about nah, it? Nah, God Maybe. bless it. It wasn't him. But it was somebody just got sick. And we were just like, you know what? Blood, I think sweat, it was Herc. I think it was Herc. No. It was no, Herc? it wasn't Herc. It wasn't Herc. No, I it mean, might it might have been when Curtis had a heart attack. Oh, yes. I, I think that's what it was. What it was. Yeah. yeah, you're on point. You're on point. So, um, and we were just like, you know what? It's ill for us to, you know, separately try to do something good for them. But the thing about it is, once you put in a certain amount of time in this business, we should have a goddamn union that says a if union, you bump your fucking yep. foot on a fucking shit after you wake up in the morning and you go on your way to bump your te- brush your teeth and you hit your big toe and your big toe turns purple, hip hop should come in <laughs> to take care of that shit. I agree. We put the only entertainment that doesn't have a union is boxing. Boxing is a brutal sport. True. Is this what we're saying? Are we saying that we're boxers? You this is what we're saying. We're saying it, that it is, it, we're here to kill each other. It's a pugilist we, sport. Because everyone is not going to make it to the promised land, right? Everyone is not. But everyone deserves the same promised land. Wow. Especially if you you put in that certain time. Like, for us, when we, so I'm trying to get back to your question. Because what we were saying, me and EFM were saying, was we should form a hip-hop union. Every time you get anything... And it's hip hop related. Five percent should go to that union, like a SAG. And I, my like thing was SAG. always like saying SAG, like like SAG. A, like, like a SAG. Yeah. But five percent, and I think we got most people that that's down with that. But I want I want you to reiterate. What did you feel when you when when you heard that? I mean, I thought I, I thought the sentiment was good. I just don't think it was well thought out because if you think about it, who who is a pioneer of hip hop? Mm-hmm. And then you got to think, all right, how do you define a pioneer in hip hop and who can say well, and who them, you can... Uh, them five people that you named? The council. What did you say? The council. That's the what council. I call it. Cool Herc, Grandmaster Flash, Bambada, him and Mel. Melly Mel, Grandmaster Cat. Would, would, would decide who's who. I wouldn't have a problem and I with feel, that. And I feel like if because that was... Because who knows better? Who the first knows five better? million should go to y'all five. That's, if, if we give it better races, it's going on. Yep. You know, if we give it better races, yes. The, that, that first five million... Rapparations, you called it. I call it Rapparations. I and that. I want you to know... I, I debuted it right here on Drink Champs, <laughs> yes. all right? Rapparations. That's my new it. quote, Rapparations. Yes, yes, I mean, no, that's just real, mean, though. That's just real. Yeah, no, I mean, no, no. listen... All jokes aside, it's, it's real. It's real. It, 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 it's as real as it is for our people. Right. For black people uh, as a whole, uh, who deserve reparations, um, right. any time that you've been exploited over over a period of time, and, and, right. and people have benefited, and not just benefited, but I mean become fucking mm-hmm. moguls. I mean they fucking control everything at this point, and could take the amount of money that it takes to give you reparations out their motherfucking pocket and won't. Right. There could be a way that you could circumvent someone having to give their own money and you siphon it from taxes if the government got involved. I mean, that's probably more complicated. A little bit. But you, you could you create that. Circumvent is you know complicated. what? You give them, give us your, our original 40 acres and a mule that you promised us in the first mm. the place. Okay? No more, no less. Right. Mm-hmm. It was a fucking 40 acres and a mule you promised us in the first place. There's enough land left out here, all right, for us to fill up. So that's where I'm at with it. God damn it, man. Yo, man. Um, I'd like to see a versus with Cold Crush versus Fantastic, just to bring it back. Mm. See, that's a way that that's a good way of doing it. Swiss get some and bread Timberland out there. could give back. Yeah, but then we got to work for that. So that's not reparations. That's not reparation. It's if, not I gotta, really, I'm if I got to do more work for something, you know what I mean? For something that you, you already own. No, 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 you're right. Yeah, you're right. right. That's, you're right. that's that, not. That's one way of looking at it. It's just, I respect like, that. I got, but but another way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is. <laughs> right, perform again. Yeah. Right. Another way of looking at it is it opens up the younger generation to actually see it in real life. Yeah, well, nah, you know, they I heard about lie. it, and there it is right in front of you now. Right. No, going back and looking at that footage, I was like, I was so amazed. 
because I was just like, damn, this is real hip hop. Like, after watching Versus and then going back and then doing this and watching y'all battle, I was just like, damn, that is hip hop. That's the essence. That's that the was essence the essence of, 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 of hip hop yeah. and battling. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and and people took for granted the DJ, like you you, you said earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, what him 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 being on point no, the DJ was, was everything. Was everything. You when did it I mean? go from being about the DJ to it being about the MC? Well, what happened? Who was getting the most pussy? What happened? The DJ <laughs> was getting all the pussy. Okay. At first. Right. The, the MCs I knew was, it. was guys that used to help carry the crates. MC was oh, carrying well, the crates? Before they were. Yo, I need MCs. you to carry my crates next Yo, time. I got Yo, carry the crates. Yo, I got that okay. in the crates. I'm bringing the crates to drink sauce. <laughs> and you Yo, carrying them. I got you back. Uh, Listen. I, I'll, I'll go do I'll go do my, my You want to get behind the ropes, nigga? <laughs> carry them goddamn Bring them motherfucking yeah, crates. That's the way you carry that motherfucking That's the way you pay do. Hey, man, so I carry the spit it. bucket, so it's even the same Boris, shit. Even Boris carried crates for me, man. He's still carrying crates in my mind. So I mean all the equipment. He's carrying a keg right now. What a lot of niggas take for granted today you know everybody wants to claim ownership and yeah I did this and I'm this and I'm so and so if you go back to the beginning of this shit if I didn't bring my equipment outside it wouldn't be no fucking party right mm. okay I never walked up to no motherfucking set and was like alright let's go I had to bring my shit outside my mm. own shit Okay, if it broke, I had to pay for it. Mm. To transport it, I had to pay for it. Mm. All right, if it was a nice day outside, niggas like, yo, casual, let's bring the set out. You know what I mean? Right. Yo, all right, fuck it, come on. Mm. Huh? Yo, who you got? It's like nine niggas outside my right. door, ready to carry everything out. Right. All right, boom, let's get it. Go out, play all day, this and that, play party, the riches, this and that, such set. And then the night start getting dark, motherfuckers disappear. Now right. I'm standing out in the motherfucking park with a bunch of equipment, you know what I mean, by my fucking self. Breaking your back. And I gotta get all that shit home. See, so those are the kind of dudes that people don't understand that you pay prior to hip hop being what you see it as. Woo. Me being Grandmaster Cass today come from me being that nigga that had to carry all of his equipment in three fucking taxi cabs, Woo. okay, to back and forth to different events and shit like that. So. Talk. Oh my God, man! Holy I mean, moly! That's what you can attribute that shit to. And we didn't really talk about my crew, my group, the Cold Crush Brothers. God damn! But we overcharging niggas for what they did. They to tried the to have Charlie Chase here today. He's in, in Chicago right now. Yeah, well, that's a good thing. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Why you laughing? <laughs> that's that bullshit, yo. That's, that's my man Chase with the funky face. Um, I'm just laughing at the line. Yeah. Um, I think I've seen Chase more than you've seen Chase. Probably. Oh, y'all don't, don't really speak? No, no, we speak all the he time. We gotta, he yeah, gave you know, me his talking, contacts. Come on, we, yeah, you know, yeah. we down, but he just down here and, you know, and we up top. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the group is concerned, um, I've gone through so many different, people talk, uh, they call it now reinventing yourself. Mm. Reinventing yourself. And, mm. and that's supposed to be something that, you know, you got to become adept to if you want any longevity in this business. Right. Well, I started out in this shit as a B-boy. Okay. B-boy <laughs> meaning? B-boy. Break dancer, B-boy, right. Bronx boy. Mm. Original, mm. you know, B-boy. And um, going to parties dancing. And one day, uh, Herc was playing at a club called the Hevalo, and a security used to be standing outside and shit, and one day he blinked. Mm. And when that nigga eyelid went down, pew, I shot up in that motherfucking club, <laughs> and I hid behind the speaker for about, I don't know, about 20 to 30 minutes, and I just saw everything that went on, and then I was like, yo, this is the fuck it. I didn't say it like that, but I was like, yo, this is it. This is what I wanna do. See, I don't want to be one of the hundreds of people out here dancing. Right. I want to be that one person that's mm. making all these hundreds of people dance. Mm. And that's when I decided I wanted to be a DJ. God damn it. Yeah, you know I mean? You don't get no harder than that. I used to stand outside the motherfucker just listening to records he might play because I was too early to get in. And I'd just see if I could catch a... Who was the DJ you looked up to besides her? 
um, all of the early DJs because there were different genres of DJs. So, uh, you know, Hollywood, of course, was the disco. Disco. Uh, not, not not so much disco when you think in the sense of disco, like this kind of disco. <laughs> nah, he wasn't that, that kind of disco. Lie. He was the grown and sexy. The grown and sexy. Suits, R&B. Tie. Suit tie. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, Flat yeah, shoes. Yeah, you know yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, I mean? Flat shoes. Yeah, I mean, what about, money. What about Coke LaRock then? Coke, mm. Coke LaRock was the MC for um, who cool her. For her, right? yeah. Well, well, for, and he sold a lot of nickels. Well, for, exactly. Yeah. Well, for us, Coke LaRock was the first hip-hop MC because wow. he was the first man on the microphone to stand next to a DJ playing wow. hip-hop music. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? Coke now, hip-hop... Uh, Coppola Rock was more in the uh, in the vein of a, like a Last Poets. Mm. Okay, Shout you know how the Last, last Poets, poets yeah. was, and and they 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 didn't rap so much as they rhymed, or they didn't rhyme so much as they rapped. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Over. Okay. And um, that was that was Coppola Rock's vibe. You know what I mean? Right. But that eventually evolved. See, early people on the mic was DJs just making announcements. Right. Mm. I'm a DJ. I'm like, yo, this and this and that. Next week, we're going to be at the PAL where we rock well. We want to see your face in the place. Trying to say you know it on beat. Right, right, right. Just a, just a little, you right, know, a little right. slick shit. The and then some Police Athletic League. Police yeah. Athletic League, yeah. yeah. That's good. Namely, the one on 103rd Street Goddamn. and Webster in the Bronx. Goddamn. Um, but these little, these little quips and these little things eventually became verses and they eventually be, no lines they became lines and then it became like punch lines and then it became verse bars and it became verses and then it evolved into rap as we know it today right. but they all come from somebody in the put saying yo my man Russ is in the house he cooling out without a doubt rock the house mm. rap came from shit like that mm. you know what I mean and TV commercials let me drop a real jewel on you. And nobody, nobody that come on this fucking show is gonna say this to you. Okay. The early one of the earliest inspirations for rhyming and MCing came from a car commercial. Okay, a great bear commercial. A great bear? Great bear. You know where you get your car fixed? Great Bear, all right, y'all niggas, it's something different now, but oh back then there I'm was this. Miami. I don't know about the Great Bear. They, it was this shiny. car company called, not a car company, but a repair place where, right, they, fix, right. where they fix your car. It was and, called Great Bear. Right. And they had this commercial well, the that used to come on, right? And it used to go like this. You're driving down the highway in the dead of night, and up ahead, there's a terrible sight. Then you hit the brakes, they're not all there. You miss this one by only a hair. Uh. You say a little prayer, you take your brakes, and you turn around, and then you look for Great Bear. Uh. And, and that was the original theme for how niggas starting rapping. That Great Bear commercial. If you listen to most people who rap they in the early days, they sound the same cadence. The this and that. Who was the that nigga on the commercial? The this, this and that. I don't know to Nobody this day. That's the MC I don't Big know. Bear, man. Some, <laughs> some fucking ad guy, probably. But, I mean, you can trace rap and, and all the elements of hip-hop. You can trace them all back to other things and things right. that have been done long before us. Long before us. But you can't say, I got this dance from the Nicholas Brothers when I never seen the motherfucking Nicholas mm. Brothers. Mm. This is that energy that was transported to me in my generation. Right. Just having to be the same energy from that generation. Jesus, I'm taking the shot for that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Would you like, would you like a shot, Russell Peters? I'm down for that. All right, cool. I'm Pour your own poison. Pour your own poison. Come on, got that. A whole Holy shot shit, we, we, we're waiting for you, Grandmaster Cat. Holy <laughs> shit, I ain't gonna lie. I said, I said this earlier. I used to let people Google for me. Oh, now I Google for myself. <laughs> this was the most funnest I've ever researched. Be, researching somebody because I appreciate you, baby. It, that's just your history. Just kept going, and it just kept going, and. I look at rap like we're superheroes. Like people who've been through rap, 
Uh, and I'm sorry for anybody in the military. I'm sorry for anybody. But I look like uh, like that. It's like you've been through the military. We went through war, and now we just got to be regular people. Right, civilians. We got to be right. civilians, and none of us know how to be a civilian. Because, Yo, you're no, right. You, that's you're a great right. analogy. You're that's right. Great. That's what made you. That's, that's, me? that's a great analogy. And your first album was The War Report. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. imagine. So he's, he hasn't oh, shit, adjusted I'm, yet. I'm literally fucked up. He's not adjusted yet. <laughs> <laughs> that made, you know, that, 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 that puts you in that position. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole thing, the whole culture was built on our need for self expression. Mm. You know, when hip hop started, the Bronx was fucked up. You know, the city at large was fucked up, but really concentrated because when, you know, the Cross Bronx Expressway was, was designed and built, that shit ran right through the fucking Bronx and tore a hole through the whole Bronx and the whole community that and there's existed. There's still traffic there. there to this day. What's wrong with that? They tore down houses yeah. to make yeah, that They tore down houses and, and, <laughs> and displaced people all over yeah. to, to make that shit happen. Across the Bronx, the worst so, highway in the world. The conditions that existed when hip hop started was the reason why I think people um, come toward the Bronx as far as hip hop because I know, I know a lot of people from Queens, Nori, yeah, and yeah. I'm talking about cats I know, people like the Disco Twins right. and the guys that used to play out on Reese Beach mm. back in the days. Mm. It's like, well, shit, we was doing, we was playing music way before Cool Hurt. Right. Yes, you were. Right. I remember as a wow. child, my, my sister lived in Queens and she used to take me out there wow. to see Plummer and Maboya wow. and DJs like that. Oh. But the, nobody wasn't cutting up no records. Right. Mm -hmm. If you look at anybody crate out there, their main record when they play, it was Love is the Message. That was his Apache hip hop. Too? No. Apache, okay. Apache when it caught on, when, okay. when hip hop started playing it. Okay. Okay? okay? Because these wasn't records they played on the radio. Hip hop come from those records that they don't play on the radio. Oh. And not even the whole record, you just play the beat the break, right. of the record. That's where all the samples from hip hop come from. That's where the, the rhythm, all the, the drums, flow, all the, the drums, the drums right. all that come from those original break beats. You know what I mean? And the thing that makes it hip hop is we not playing the whole record. Do, throughout, like at least two, three hours of this party, all you hearing is sections of records. Creating, not the beginning either. new records. Not even the beginning right. of the record. Right, creating a, a record unto itself. Right. The Let break, the break itself created new music right. today Let that me, people listen to today. Let me ask you this question, right? The message, right, came out it meant like real street shit, but then the message get remaked from Puff Daddy and Mace. Uh huh. <laughs> you say that. And Ice Cube. First. Ice Cube used it too. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, I forgot that part. Ice Cube music too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. What with, I think. Check effects. yourself. I question this boy. Yeah, with Yeah, because it was check yourself before you wreck yourself. All right, cool. Then my I mean, by that, you t first of all, as far as Ice Cube concerned, you're talking about the nigga who made jacking for beats. All right, so you. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And he, he jacked all East Coast beats. He go get what he want. Yeah. But I mean, I, rightfully so. You know what I mean? His first album was done by the Bomb Squad. Yeah. Here right. in New York. Here's yeah. a better question. Public Enemy. Yeah. This is the question I've been wanting to ask. All. Common made a record talking about he used to love her. I used to love her. Ah, I love that shit. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's it. just relate it to that, right? Hip hop was a girl in the Bronx. How did you recognize that girl when she went to the West Coast? Well, or did you even recognize her? Well, did, see, did her pussy smell the same. I Jesus Christmas! I'm sorry, yeah. what she got <laughs> she got fake titties when she went she to the West Coast. Fake titties when she went to the West Coast. No, not in the West Coast. <laughs> she, no, no, she I, got gangster. I, let me shut the fuck up and just. Ask I related. I, I related. I related to that on on, on so many different levels. Because what's the first West Coast, somebody, West Coast act you heard? Huh? What's the first West Coast act you heard? First West when Coast you was like, act what the I heard. Fuck are they doing Ice that tea? out there? Uh, no, I can't say Ice T. Over here. Some of the world cast record. Group. No, it was like like Arabian Prince. Yeah, really? yeah. which is NWA. Or oh, Egyptian you know, Lover for me. Yeah. Egyptian Lover. Yeah, those guys that boom. But he eventually boom, that's boom, NWA, eventually. Boom, boom, boom. Them niggas. 
Yeah. And the beat go boom, boom. They were trying to look like y'all. They were trying to look like y'all. Nah, 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 nah. Fuck first, that. Don't, don't put like that shit on us. Don't put that shit on us. <laughs> <laughs> they was look. They was like ready for the world. They was. I mean, they was on. They was on some functified shit had over here. Shit on like There's a lot of Jerry Curl juice Jerry floating Jerry around. Girl, yeah. Hey I man, mean, I mean, we're not this in the West Coast either, no, bro. Not, this, I, we just talk West Coast over here. Never that. Never that. Never that. That's my. That's my second home. Okay. That's the only place. Other place I had a residence. Okay, wow. or, or, and out there, I mean, we got mad love, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And Ice T was the first MC from the West Coast that I, I met and, and gravitated toward because they had the club called Radio Tron. Radio Tron, yeah, out there. I love how and Russell Peters know all the stories. This nigga's a historian, He's a detective man. He don't play, India, bro. Uh, it ain't India. hearsay. <laughs> this nigga research like you do. Uh, yeah, I love it. And, and he's a fucking me- uh, elephant. Mm. He retains all that shit. Mm. Um, so yeah, the radio charge. So that's blind? when I first met. Take a blind. Ice and Dave uh, Chappelle just took out the same can. All right, that, damn, Nobody that's love. I just saw that. Like I just saw that. That's, that's beautiful. I'm on it. Okay. Uh, we got like another 15 minutes and that's it. We got to go. But come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on. I'm sorry. Give us some stuff dirty. Come so, yeah, on. yeah. Um, I can't stop these guys. These guys are great. What the fuck? Y'all keep, keep... Okay, we just keep talking. We don't give a fuck. Just okay. keep going. We was, we was in um, Megatron. What was it called? Radiotron. Radiotron. Yeah, Radiotron. That's so that's when I first met Ice-T. And, um, Six in the morning. Uh, Africa out. Islam from, from Africa Zulu Islam Nation. Son of Bambada. Okay. Um had relocated out there to, to the West Coast, to L.A., and he became Ice-T's producer. So I met Ice when I did the Radiotron out there, and we connected, and Ice, I was talking to him. We was building, and and I told him. Jerome, we in the building. God damn, how you going to oh, miss shit, not my brother. How you doing? What how up, Jerome? How, how you going to miss a blunt? How you, baby? How you going to miss, miss a blunt? Good to see you, man. <laughs> I threw him a blunt. He missed it. Yeah. Russell, Russell, Jerome, we in the building. Russell Peters is going to... I'm sorry. Get, 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 continue. You're talking about... Um, it's this, the Tron shit. Come on. Come on, Russell Peters. Help me out. So, you, so, so me and Ice-T was building. So Ice-T, he was yeah. like, yo, I want to do this hip-hop shit, man. Uh-huh. But... um, um, I need a group, man. I want to get a group. I was like, yo, can you write rhymes? by yourself? Can you write your own rhymes? He was like, yeah. I said, then you don't need a group. I mean, I said, just stay by yourself. Go solo, do your own thing. I said, and you had this whole West Coast shit on lock by yourself. Wow. Ask him. Wow. He tell you to this day, that's why he called me one of his mentors, you know what I mean? Wow. But the ill shit is, and I don't think a lot of people know this, that Ice-T's from New Jersey. I feel like you should stop. <laughs> he was born, born in New Jersey, yeah. Say that, because... <laughs> But he was like in his 20s when he moved to the West Coast. That's a grown ass man. He's a grown ass man. He's a New Jersey cat originally. I just like to blow your mind a little bit. He's a what? He's a. I don't want to live with you and Lord Vanessa. How about, I, I, how about this? <laughs> how about this? I, Ice T from New Jersey. Wait a minute. Moved to the West Coast in the early 80s, and so, then picked up hip hop from there. Yeah, after so the service. Like, after that's like saying service. he's the first Tupac. Because Tupac was actually really, really. New York. From New York. And then, then Maryland. Baltimore. Then he moved to. Uh, Oakland. Oakland. And then. So you're telling me Ice T is the same thing. Essentially. He's my friend. I don't, I don't even want to hit him right now. What is he is the same thing? They say Ice T moved to. West Coast in the early 80s from New Jersey. In his yeah, yeah, 20s. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, in his yeah. 20s? I mean, yeah, he finished the service. I don't know about his age. I that means he from, he from Brick City then? Yeah. From Newark, right? From yeah. Newark, somewhere around After there. After 14, wherever you grew up at, that's where you fucking from. Yeah. I don't even he did. He went, so are we reclaiming IC right now? He went, he went to the military and then he moved to the West Coast. Shit. This is history. We reclaim that, it. That, that's why he could do New Jack City no this problem. This is history. Yes, right. yes, 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 yes. I'm oh. motherfucking... Um, mm-hmm. Oh my man, uh, uh, Morgan Freeman in this bitch. <laughs> but um, did you get one of them good blunts? That's a good. Blunt. <laughs> yeah, I got one. You. Yeah, that's that's. that's oh, you want me to light it? Let me tell you something. Let me, let me just say. Is something. that the Peruvian blunt? Let me just say something real quick. I'm gonna give it right back to you real quick. I hung out with Dave Chappelle in Atlanta one day. I saw you. And I fucking had the mid weed on me. I was so. Like I landed, my boy said, I got some I got some eye weed. I was like, all right, cool, fuck it. I just went straight to St. Regis, brought my bags down, went, we went straight, Mr. Me, Mr. Lee, boom. I don't know I'm running to fucking Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle walks in, I'm like, oh shit. And he's like, oh shit. I was like, oh, you gotta pass the blood to Dave Chappelle, pass the blood to Dave Chappelle. I'm looking, he walks away with the blood, I'm like, shit. 
If this motherfucker realizes I just handed him a mid blunt, okay, I, it's been fucking with me for. It'll be some Martin so, Lawrence so shit. So I figured out this nigga's. <laughs> I figured out this nigga's here this whole weekend. I had my boy Morris come over. We rolled this his nigga bomb schism. A day, and I made sure a day the VIP room was Shut lit the up, fuck up. Shut up, beats in the hood. All right, all right, all right. Don't lose up. Big up Tyler. Shut up, you up in the building. Let me live. Let me big up Tyler. Quality the first day and all, all the, the other days. My brother Jerome, we came through and made Yo, sure we love. got through. But let me tell you something. I smoked that room out. I made sure. I know they you know did. I came with the back. You know, see had, now you. I mean, I you got the. Off. I mean, you got the car blanche. You can go anywhere and I smoke. You need another one. Weed. Yeah. Take another one, goddamn it. God yeah. You want? I, I feel like we should take another shot. I just feel like it. Let's I'm go. with you. Let's, Let's do one on one, man. Like Everybody, like Let's do one Come on, my Henny boys got me. They gonna get me where I need to be. Did you just call them the Henny boys? That's my Henny boys over there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey, that's, listen, we go through. That's very violent, people. We go through. Order love. If you drink Hennessy you all day, you're violent. Right. <laughs> I don't, yeah, y'all my niggas. Don't worry about it. I didn't define me. I mean, my man Puerto Rico, Big Dame. Wow. My man KB. Wow. Black man. And my man Big Tone. Let's make some noise. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What up? Yeah. 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 You, 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 you taking a shot with us? Yeah, I'm taking a shot. Okay, you want to Y'all good? Y'all want yeah, 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 yeah. Pour yourself a shot first, though. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna take a shot of this with you. Oh, you gonna go ahead, yeah, 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 you want to try this? No, no, listen, I don't I'm gonna be try honest. whatever, nigga. How many times I'm gonna be on drink <laughs> yeah, 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 come on. A- anytime you, you want, want actually. Yeah, anytime you come want. Come on, Jerobe, come on here and get a shot, goddammit. Jerobe, come on, man. Come on, yeah. We ain't got a chair right now, but come get a shot, goddammit. Jerobe, the legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tribe Nah, no, it's okay. We love you, nigga. Come on. Brother. Come on, nigga. Come I on. I just came to see my big brother. Hey, listen, I miss you, bro. I miss you, bro. I think about you all the time. You said you was here? Yes. Okay. I came through. I love you, man. Thank you. Come through. You already know, fam. You know, that's a great question. Yo, come tell, on, tell your shot. team to come and t- take the drink over yeah, here. Yeah, come on, get on, get on. Hey, yo, come on, come on, come on, Henny boys. Got let's go, let's, let's go, go, Henny boys. Henny men, Henny men, Henny men, Henny men. Oh. Not many hey, men, Henny men. Let's try to keep it here. I just drink this shit. Henny men, where's that for pound me? Okay. Henny men, that's a new name. Henny men. That's dope. God damn it, man. All right, man. Love, love, man. Love, love, love. Come on. Come on, brothers. brothers. Salute, great salute, to meet salute, everybody. salute, salute. Great to meet everybody. Salute, fellas. Salute, salute. All right. With the mean bucket on, I'm watching you. <laughs> Got the mean bucket right, on. That's my shoe. That's my guy. That's some queen shit, though, right there. The bucket salute. is us. Yeah. Let's just be clear. Fellas. Salute, salute man. Salute. Grandmaster motherfucking cast. We love you. Fuck up, Thank man. you for yeah. doing what you do. You did sure. and continue to do. We always going to salute. We always going to respect you. And we love you, brother. Thank, Thank you. you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I got one more question, then we're gonna take a picture and a drop. Ooh, that shit is smooth. Is that not smooth? Keep that it. Is nice. I don't work for the nice. company. I don't work for the company. That mama hunter was a little hot. My man has like been trying to get me on this Japanese whiskey for three years. You drink some more of that? You see spirits. Shit. That's that Japanese whiskey, baby. All right. I love you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Has? I mean, I has Big what? Big Bang Hank right I there. Mine. LT. Oh, shit. So what's next? Grandmaster Cash, so what's next for you, man? Um, what we doing? I don't know what I did. And like I said, we was talking about earlier about reinvention. Mm. I mean, I started out as DJ Casanova Fly. I, DJ MC casting over fly to Grandmaster casting over fly to Grandmaster Cas. I shortened my name from casting over fly because Grandmaster Flash had a security crew called the Casanovas, who were gangsters. And mm. I didn't like me being casting over fly like I was affiliated with them. So anything could have happened to me behind some shit they did. You know oh. what I mean? And they, they like well, they, they were foul names. Not foul, but they, they were security, but they was them niggas in the street. Foul was, you know, Black Spades, you know what I mean, and all that. Black Spades, I mean? always wanted to know so, about Black Spades. So I just shortened my name to Kaz from Casanova Fly. That's why my name is Kaz in the first place. Mm. Um, and then uh, 
from different groups, I mean, and crews and guys leaving and going to other places and I, me and having to start over. First I had the uh, Casino Flying Disco Wiz and then my man Wiz got knocked and went to jail. Then I had to recruit other Disco niggas. Disco Wiz so, the Puerto Rican, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, Puerto Rican half, Puerto Rican half Cuban. Mm. That's and what then, I told you, bro. It's like if you I and Nori had a Cubans, big, I, 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 bro, I'm Cuban. I didn't believe me. Cubans was there. So you saying Cubans was Yes, half Cubans was there. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. telling you, I had all the all Latinos. All Latinos. I told you, we was there. So, so I mean, from the Mighty Force to the Force Five to the Notorious Two, when it was just me and JDL, until they recruited me to the Cold Crush, and you know, until after the Cold Crush, you know what I mean? My, my, I've, I've had to keep going and, and do different things. Now, this day, I mean, I'm doing everything from hip hop sightseeing tours. Which is dope. It's dope. Dude, I've been doing that for 18 That's years. That's super dope, man. Sightseeing tours? It's yeah, bro. Hush. This is dope. Hush hip hop sightseeing tours. I take people from all around the world on the bus in Midtown Manhattan, and then I take them uptown to the uh, Who better Harlem to do that? Bronx. Who better to do that than I show them? Who about that? I show them where hip hop happens. This is I show fire. Like, like, who do you want? Mr. Lee to do that? What? No. <laughs> Grandmaster Cass. Exactly. So you talking about like Star Mac. Like, like, look, Mr. Lee, but it's yeah, not going to be you. Oh, bro. that's I, fire. I'll take, I'll take you to 1520 Sedgwick Avenue. Wow, that's fire. You didn't know that? No. That shit is dope. We gotta do it on drink chest. We gotta go on on drink chest and bring the cameras. Word, that's that's fire. I've been doing that for 18 years. Wow, you just said that's fire. So I also host the. um, uh, uh, it was formerly the Tools of War Summer Park Jams up in Cortona Park and mm-hmm. in, all in, in the parks around mm-hmm. the, uh, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, the Tools of War, which was uh, Chris TZ and Pop Master Fable, uh, mm-hmm. they they dropped out um, in 2018. I took over in 2019. So wow. I've been doing that since then. We had a break with COVID, and now we're back. So every got year that. I got like three to four well, three to five thousand people wow. out in a park every wow. every Thursday Rockin'. in July. Rocket, wow. exactly. And we got, I mean, DJ Scratch. I got Cash wow. Money out there. I got, I got real niggas out there. Wow. Lil Finesse did it. Lil wow. Finesse. Wow. We need to go. Lil Finesse helped start it. Anytime, wow. we gotta go out there. Come on, anytime. Just tell us when. Goddamn. I'm trying to, I'm trying to yeah. fill you in. I'm Come trying on. to let you know what's we, going on. My organization, Windows of Hip Hop. I mean, we mm. making magic in the community. We are mm. building a studio. Mm. In, in, in a Bronx um, elementary school, CS55. Wow. We adopted the school, mm. and they adopted Yo. us. So uh, with the help of the borough president and our councilwoman, uh, Vanessa Gibson, you know, we donated funds to the school, and, and we, we play an active roles in, you know, in the kids' uh, development. We got hip-hop curriculums that we've written and, and, and put forward and implement it in these in these uh, projects that we're implementing in the schools, and I'm ex- I'm more excited about that than anything else that we're doing out there right now. Um, I uh, I just been an, uh, uh, appointed the official DJ for Kumo D now because I've been on tour with him for the last few years. You know, we did a joint together called Notice, what? and uh, so I'm on the road with him. Um, me and Shy Rock is going to start Rock the Bells Radio. Dope. We're, we're going to have a show uh, three hours uh, Monday through Friday Fire. on Rock the Bells. So that's a platform that uh, I think I was made for. Yeah, you know I mean? and legends. I, I, I've been following you, yeah, and yeah, you, you know what I mean. And, I, and, and even though, and even though I've been doing this for a long time, I haven't been doing it in this format. And I understand that there's different dynamics. To, to entertainment and, right. and, and you gotta recognize right. that yo this radio nigga this ain't the stage right right. this ain't the studio right I mean this is something else so I definitely been checking you know you, you right. know what I mean how y'all do your things how shit rock and shit like that so appreciate you and hope you know hopefully I do half as well nah you know listen well, let me just tell you something man nah, you're gonna we kill got it. your back this is your platform this is your format anytime you wanna come on here and even if you want to pick your toes on here, it's okay. We don't give a fuck. You want to FaceTime us you wanna, if you can't yeah, come? Yeah. You FaceTime us and, nah, listen, and you chime come, in? You come, you come to Miami. Anytime you come to Miami, you want to be here just to talk about, I don't give a fuck. If you want to talk about the new gazelles you got, come <laughs> in. This is what we owe. This platform is yours. We made it for you. 
We made it for people of your stature. And if you ever want to talk to the media, don't go to the media. Got Just you. go to your homies. Got you. You go to your homies. When your homies got your back, it's going to let you do what the fuck you want to do. We love you. We respect you. We got to take a couple pictures. We got to take some drops. And we got to wrap this the fuck up. But listen, this was fucking a pleasure. Oh, we was, we was mad excited. You know, we 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 real hip hop fans. I I mean I don't I I know, I know he was excited, but I couldn't tell because I I you know it, I didn't see you until just now until we oh, got here. Oh yeah, yeah, and, no, no, you know no. what I mean. And and I I don't want to blow you up, yeah, but I, I believe that I, yeah. I, I I am in a position that I could do this ahead, with no go. repercussions. Let's go. Okay, we love you, baby. Go ahead, now, go. Uh, uh, Russ hooked us up. Uh-huh. When once Russ, Russ did drink chow, like yo, I want to. They've been they've been asking me, you know, you know, EF have been calling me, but I, I haven't got no feedback. So he was like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I said EAF. <laughs> I mean EFF, EFF. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, really? He's dyslexic. He should have really? been laughing. <laughs> really? Let's take another shot. Hold on, hold on. No, I'm gonna, shot. First of all, no, first of all, I've been calling bottle. you Effin. Right, right, right. DJ Effin. I've been calling him Effin too. And then I've been seeing things that say. Yeah, EFN. Right, 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 right. So I, I tried to incorporate shot, both nah, of them together. Shot, nah, I got to take it. Very important for me. Are you going to do whiskey with me? Okay. Okay. I got right, you. Let's go. Let's do Mama Juan. Hey, let's go. Yeah, 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 I got you. <laughs> let's go. Pass, pass me no, that no, fireball over there. Take the best to drink. That's enough. That's enough? Go ahead, hit me. That's enough or you want more? Hit me like you hit yourself. Yeah, I'm going. 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 Things. So listen, you sure, know, are you familiar do with? Do you want um ice or no ice? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm uh, good. If you gonna go straight, I'm gonna go straight. I'm going straight. I'm going straight. All right, boom, bro, boom, boom. May all your pain be champagne. All right, let me drink some champagne, goddamn. Dale que tú puedes. Oof. It's sweeter as it gets thicker. Yo, I want to salute my Henny boys that came down to support boys. me. They Make flew out. The Yo, who's gonna eat this? Someone me. gotta eat this shit. Nah, I ain't. <laughs> oh, come on, let's take, let's take the pictures. They're not there. Yeah, because they literally, they literally shut us down. But come on, let's keep it going. But uh, let's take these pictures. Let's get Ooh. it. Holy moly, welcome.